Alright, what up people? What's going on? What's popping? It's your boy Mr. Locario, the bad boy of the dating game. What's good? So I'm doing a, a, a late night show real quick. I don't know how long I'm going to be on here. Um, just waiting to see this if this thing is acting right. Okay, it's acting right. This is perfect. <clears throat> this is perfect. So anyway, so real quick, I wanted to talk about you know, how to, you know, create situations for sex to happen easier for you guys. You understand? Because a lot of times sex doesn't happen because of the logistics of shit. What's up? What's going on? Real deal. Kenwood Drive. What up? What's going on? So let me give you the number. The number is 646-481-3901. But let me let me let me get through this real quick before you guys start calling. Because I know you're gonna start calling real quick, but I wanna you know talk about some stuff before you guys before I start picking up the phone. You feel me? <clears throat> so, oh, first before we get into anything, make sure, of course, make sure you get how to have sex with two women a day, the hard copy, the ebook, and the audio book. You understand? Just get all three. Just fucking get all three. Make it happen, right? But you guys can click the link below this video to get this book. You feel me? So shout out to all the people that's been getting the book. Shout out to all the people that's been getting the, you know, the um the audio book, all that shit. So make sure you guys check that out. We got in the chat room. <clears throat> Alan Haynes, what's going on? Michael Jones, what up? Jermaine Jones, what's going on? Frank JDM, what's popping? Bernard Leon, what's going on? Staying ready was good. You said I should come to LA so you could go hunt, hunting for chicks. <laughs> I feel you. Shit. I need to start traveling more. I'm actually going to be traveling uh, more by the end of the year. Tony Torres was good. J Skills was up. My doozy. Did I say that right? <clears throat> What's going on? So, yeah, so I wanted to talk about, you know, how to, you know, position yourself. To actually make sex happen a little bit more easier for you guys, right? See, the thing the thing that messes up a lot of situations when you're actually trying to have sex with chicks, or you might go out and meet a girl and you're thinking, hey, I wanna, you know, I wanna take her back to my place and all this other stuff. A lot of it has to do with logistics, a lot of it has to do with how you set up uh, the situation. You know, and, and that's going to determine if you're going to get sex easier. It's going to determine if you position yourself to make sex easier to happen. See, real quick, a lot of things that, you know, that uh, that dudes don't understand is, and I talked about this in my program, uh, The Ultimate Guide to Getting a Girl Back to Your Place. What I talked about is you got to make sure that your house is clean before you leave your house. You understand what I'm saying? Because now you're positioning yourself, you're preparing for when a woman comes back to your place. You don't want your place looking like a piece of shit. <laughs> and then you at the club or at the bar and you want to bring a chick back and you're on your way back to your crib and then she walks into your house and it looks like disgusting. You understand? That's going to ruin the whole mood and she might not want to have sex with you. You understand? I've done that before, too. There was, there was, I remember there was one time I took a chick home. Everything was cool. We got back to my place. And it was funny because the living room was cool, but my room was actually a mess. And I was like, shit, my room's a mess. And I was like, let me, you know, I was like, I should just clean it up. And then I was like, yo, let me clean up my room first. She's like, no, 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 it's okay, whatever. So she goes into the room and the shit is just terrible. As soon as she walks in there, she's like, uh, you know, it's getting kind of late. I think I should go home. You understand? So then I end up not being able to fuck with her. And that's all because my room was fucked up. You see what I mean? So a lot of times you have to make sure that you are doing things and preparing and positioning yourself to actually get the sex. See, Brad, what's up? Invincible Shaolin, what's going on? ZRE Zhao, did I say that right? What's popping? Female Pimp is in the house. J. Alize Beats, what's going on? Jermaine Jones was popping with you. So, yeah, so you got to prepare yourself. Also, um, what you want to do also, too, is that sometimes, let's say you um, you want to go on go to spots that's near your crib. You understand? Jay Alizé says sometimes women are looking for an excuse to get out. <laughs> yeah, they do. They do. They be looking for any excuse. And that's the thing. 
That's another thing. You want to have your situation so tight that she can't find a reason to 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 to, to look for. You understand? But another thing too is that you know you guys can go to spots that's near your crib. So if you know a bar that's near your place, that's like walking distance or even a, a five minute drive away, you understand? Go to those spots and holler at chicks because then it's going to be easier for you to bring them back to the crib. You understand? And then there's other situations where you know you got to think of logistics. Like if you out um, with your boys or whatever. Right. And you see a group of girls and you got to make sure that your boys occupying the other girls. See if you could break away with the other chick and bring her back to your place. You understand? So you're going to have to have someone distract her friends while you're able to get her to like warm up to you to be able to leave with you. You understand? You got to you and there's so much things you got to do that if you don't think about it, it's going to stop the situation from happening. Like you might be out at a spot. Because I know a lot of times, I live in New York, so I'll go to a lot of these different spots in New York, and there'll be girls from out of town. You understand? So I know that they're only going to be here for, they'll be like, oh, I'm leaving tomorrow, I'm leaving two days from now. So then it's like, if okay, if she's leaving tomorrow, then we got to do some shit tonight. So I got to figure out, how do we do this tonight? Where do we go to make this happen tonight? You see what I mean? What up, the alpha male was going on. Dre the Great was popping. Sheldon Smith was going on. So, you know, you guys got to make sure you're thinking about all these different logistics, all these different things that can, you know, help you to make shit happen or that might stop you. Like, how many of you guys actually have condoms on you at all times? <laughs> you understand? <laughs> Most of you probably don't. You need to make sure you have condoms on you at all times. You have to position yourself to be ready because you might be in a situation where shit could go down and you ain't got no fucking condoms and you should not be going in these chicks raw. You understand? And So you got to make sure you got the condoms. Jay, you said you hate condom sex? <laughs> you got to have the condoms, bro. But this is what I'm saying. There's there's so much shit that you got to make sure that you think about in a lot of cases in order for shit to go down. Because there's times where you might want shit to go down and it's not going to go down because of the logistics is all fucked up. You understand? And sometimes, like, let's say if you guys meet a chick on Tinder, right? You're, you know, there's a lot of chicks that be on Tinder or even on these other sites or whatever, who be they'll be in town or in your town for a few days, you understand? So you got to make sure that you know that when you meet up with these girls, it's most likely <laughs> that they're trying to smash because they're in town for a small amount of time. Dre the Great, you say you got to straight while the pussy's hot. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. So a lot of chicks, they'll come from here... They'll come, uh, hold on, I'm going to take calls in a second. They'll come from another place to where you're at, be in town for maybe two or three days. And so they're trying to make shit happen. So you got to make sure that you um, get your logistics right. Find out how long she's going to be here. Find out where she's staying. You know, see if you can take her back to your place or go to where she's at in the hotel, whatever it is. You feel what I'm saying? So that you got to make sure that is happening. Jason Green, what's going on? You say your boy is saying you got to have a checklist. <laughs> All right, Sheldon, I'm going to have you call, call in again. Hold on, let me put down a number. For some reason, every time we're trying to type on this shit, it'll be acting funny. So the number is 646-481-3901. So if you guys want to call in, you can make it happen. Oh, man, my throat is feeling crazy right now. I got that late night, I'm about to catch a goddamn cold voice. Yo, what's going on, bro? What's going on, my man? I, I try not to be too long. No, no, that's but I want to say, I took, some, I took some of your advice, as, what you said, you know, to have a girl call in and check in before you go out on a date. Right. And I did that, she flaked on me, man, but you mm -hmm. know, uh, <laughs> 
I'm glad I checked in, like you said. You know, right. And she didn't even leave any type of uh, alternative time. She just said, no, I ain't going to make it. I'm right. like, well, okay, well, holler at me when you're ready. Right. Still no uh, response, so I deleted the number right. after that day. <laughs> <laughs> so you, so, so you, you know, uh, right, what you so said you, is true, man, because these bras would she had me waiting at the bar exactly. without saying anything. Exactly. So so she so you hit her up and say, yo, we still on and she was like, Oh, I'm not gonna make it and that was it. Exactly. This was like four or five hours ahead of time. Right, right. You see what I'm saying? That and that's what I'm saying. You see they they be doing that BS because what would have happened was she wasn't gonna show up. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> like you would have been you would yeah, have went this was happening to deal with women online and also in person, but this was somebody I met online. But right. I had some plans, you know, just in case. Because a lot of times I, I'd be thinking if a chick does do that, I'm still going to go out and look for some more. Right, right, exactly. That's all it is because, trust me, you do not want to be going out here wasting time going to meet some chick you taking your time to go out wherever you're supposed to meet her. She don't show up. You, you know what I mean? It's just like... That shit is, is lame. You feel what I'm saying? So it's better that it's like, okay, well, I know you ain't coming through, so it is what it is. So I ain't got to go out there and waste time. You feel what I'm saying? So, exactly. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in agreement with you. I'm not trying to have a long-winded conversation, a long uh, change of text with these girls, you know. Like right. you said, I believe it's the truth. You get them offline, get them in person as fast as possible. I mm. thought that, you know, before you said that, but you just reassure all the things I think. Exactly. So I want to thank you for that. Exactly. And that's my up, last bro. point I want to make before I let somebody else call in. Is mm. I wondered if you had any advice to like kind of like checking the temperature of a cheat of a female, you know, before you kind of step to her. Because I find that an interesting thing I do to kind of see, you know, what's up with the chick. Is like if I'm at a bar, I kind of wave at them. Mm. If they wave back and see them friendly and something, then I know what's on. And I go over there and talk. Mm. And she try to act like she don't see me, then I let it go. Right. I was wondering if you had any other tips like that because, you know. <laughs> You don't want to waste your time stepping to a bride who's not, you know, who had a, some kind of mood or whatever mm -hmm. however way she's feeling. Right. I mean, well, well, you know, there's there's a few ways to get, to get a chick's attention, but the thing is, too, you wanna you wanna make sure that some, you know, sometimes you're just gonna wanna approach and talk because the thing is, is that your actual like interaction and approach. And, you know, the, the stuff you're saying and you actually having a conversation with the girl, a lot of times is a thing that gets them, you know, that gets their attention. So a chick could be looking like she's in a bad mood. You feel what I'm saying? But if you go and talk to her and you say something, she might be, you know, responsive and I get into a conversation and things go the way it needs to go. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of times it's really just like you could wave, like you said, or you can like try to get eye contact. Or sometimes if you're staring at a girl, you're looking in her direction and she sees you or looks in your direction, you understand? And then you get that eye contact, then that's go time. You feel what I'm saying? But it's not really, you know, like too many things you could do um, as far as being like, you know, away from her. So it's, it's more so you just approaching and talking and then getting her attention through your energy, your vibe and what you're saying. You see what I mean? So, so it's, yeah. it's really, it's really about being, um, about practicing that because the thing is too, let's say you see a girl and she looks like she's, um, she has like an attitude or she looks like she's fucking, you know, you know like how some girls you see in a bar or club and they, they just look sort of stink, you know what I'm saying? But she might be hot, you know what I mean? Like, okay, she's hot, but she got that stink look on her face or the, what they call it, the resting bitch face, you feel what I'm saying? Exactly. But, but I don't want to cut you off real quick. I just yeah. want to address something real quick. Mm -hmm. I hear somebody here saying, wave, it comes off as creepy. All that creepy mm -hmm. talk, that just comes across as whether the, a woman likes you or mm -hmm. not because they won't say Brad Pitt is creepy. Right. They won't say Idris Alba is creepy. Right. So Jermaine, whoever your name is, bro, you can get some game. <laughs> okay, continue, bro. No, nah, because the thing is, the thing is, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't no thing to, you know, to, to wave at her because sometimes, like, there have been times where I was in the street and I would be seeing a chick coming across the street and before she's like, you know, she's like a, like a few feet away from me and I get her attention before she's in front of me. So I would like wave to her, be like, yo, what up, what up? And then like, or I'll put my hand out to like, to, to shake her hand. You feel what I'm saying? As she's coming towards exactly. me. Exactly. So, so the thing is, is that when you, and this is the thing, this, then that, that works more in the street too, because a lot of times if you're in the street and you're trying to holler at girls, they're usually, yeah, I was thinking of it for that matter. Sometimes right. I try to act like I know. I'm like, hey, what's going right, on? Right, right. Because it, because the thing is, in the street, women they're very fucking in in they're like uh, in a zone. Like they're just like on autopilot. You feel what I'm saying? So you some, then you got to figure out ways of breaking through that. Sometimes. Right. You see what I'm saying? So that that Especially you know, they got some, something 
talking in their ear or they're messing around on their phone. That's right, why I right. Said, you know? Don't right. get me wrong, I'll step up and talk to them, but sometimes, man, I just, you know, like, Right, but like, but but I always feel like talking to crazy, bro. Right, but but I always feel like the best way though is like especially if you're in a bar or a club, you definitely just gotta go up and and start speaking because the th- is that you know when you when you start talking because the waving really or or getting their attention in any other way as far as like you know um, any body movements or gestures you feel what I'm saying is just to like get their attention but it doesn't really do as much because you're still gonna have to go up and talk you see what i'm saying so oh, yeah. the, so the oh, end yeah, result yeah talk, i just said that because i've had a situation like that before where mm-hmm. i see them kind of stay, scan in the room and i kind of catch their eye and they catch mine i mm-hmm. just wave and smile and they when they smile back and i can let them walk over and go talk man. right right, right. yeah so like, it's... like whatever get the fuck out of here and i'm like okay i'm gonna let this go right and so yeah so that's the thing you can you know you can get their attention that way, but the thing is, you know, at the end of the day, you still gotta. Once you go up and talk, that's the real like meat and potatoes of the situation, because that's when you're gonna really know like what's up with the girl. You see what I'm saying? Because a lot of times, yeah. chicks will, you know, they'll you you you're not really gonna get to the uh, the nitty gritty of if a chick is feeling you until the actual conversation is going on. This is why I'll be telling dudes, like, because dudes will, will actually sit there and wait for a girl to look at them. They're like, I'm not going to talk to no girl unless she's looking in my direction, unless she gives me eye contact, yada, yada, yada. But the thing is, is that no matter what a chick is doing, even if a chick's not giving you eye contact, even if a chick doesn't even see you, like, she, her, her, her back could be turned to you. She don't even know you there. You could just walk up, you know, get right in front of her, be like, yo, what's up, how you doing, blah, 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 and you start talking because that's the thing that's going to get the ball rolling. You see what I'm saying? So I would say just, exactly. you know, the main thing is just practicing that type of shit. You feel what I'm saying? So, yeah. Yeah. You know. How would you do with somebody that's kind of like busy, acting like they, you know, they, they get through it real fast, you mm-hmm. know, they ain't trying to look or nothing like that. You're like, maybe some business wasn't walking from building to building. You talking about like if you're outside and the chick is like walking all fast and all that other shit? Yeah, you know, that's why I basically was talking about this because I have no problem mm-hmm. stepping up and, you know, talking to some of these women, but mm-hmm. I just need to just kind of break the monotony of them, you know, being in their zone or trying to act right. like they don't see nobody. Right. right. Well, the and thing is, well, the thing is, you got to. Step in their way and like. Right. Well, the thing go is, ahead. you got to, you got to, you have to also uh, flow with the situation, meaning you have to move sort of how they're moving in that situation. So, for example, I always talk about if a girl, if you're talking to girls in the street, you know, if a girl's coming towards you, you know what I'm saying, if she's walking it towards your direction, you understand? Then you got to get up yeah. in front of her and start talking. I usually say if, if she's a, she has, she should be a few feet, uh, you know, um, in front of you before, and, and then you get her attention. You say, hey, how you doing? You know, put your hand out, shake her hand, and then start talking. Because you don't want to wait till she's like right near you or when she's about to pass you because it's going to be harder to do that. Or if you're walking and a chick is walking with you or, or you're walking beside her, just walk with her and talk. You feel what I'm saying? And in some situations, what you might do is let's say you're actually standing somewhere or you're waiting somewhere. Let's say you're waiting for a bus or something and a girl is walking past or whatever. As she's walking past you, you you start talking to her and then have her turn around and stop and and then tell her to come to you. You see what I mean? So it's different ways that you could do it. And especially if you get a girl to come to to where you're at, that's showing extreme interest. So it's, this is a good little trick you can do on, on the street that you if you want to see if a girl's really interested in you, where you're standing, you're stationary and she's walking past you. And as she walks past you, you say something to her. And then when, and, it, and if you get her attention, you tell her to come back to you. So you don't move. You'd be like, yo, come here for a second, come here for a second. And if she comes to you, that's showing that she's has some interest. Because a girl who doesn't who's not interested, she doesn't just keep walking. You feel what I'm saying? So that's something you could do is yeah. just try try to do that station and everything where you're just sort of standing there and as she's walking past or she's walking towards you, you start talking to her and you'd be like, Hey miss, how you doing? Blah blah blah. And if she's sort of like Still walking past, be like, come here for a second, come here for a second, but you don't, you don't move. You see what I mean? And then by her actually coming through, and talking and standing there with you and having a conversation, it's like ninety nine point nine percent that she's feeling it. You feel what I'm saying? Because she's not gonna stop unless she's feeling that type of shit. You feel what I'm saying? True. Yeah, True. Man. I guess people also gotta get okay with rejection if that happens. It, you know, things right, that they right. not clear. Yeah, because it's going to be girls who is going to, you know, stop. You know, that's not going to stop. It's going to be girls who are going to just ignore you. Like, all that shit's going to happen. You feel what I'm saying? So, it's just that you got to be on point with 
how you're doing it and being comfortable with you doing it. Because it's really, that's all it really is about is your comfortability. It's about how comfortable are you talking to women? How comfortable are you approaching random chicks? How comfortable are you having conversations with the girls? Because there's going to be some girls who's feeling it, some girls who's not, some girls who's going to ignore you. But, you know, so you just got to be able to be comfortable doing what you're doing. You feel what I'm saying? That's all that. Okay, I'm comfortable just, just sometimes, man, I'm just trying to be in the mood. Right, right. Yeah, you just got to keep practicing that shit. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, my man. Brother, all right, I'm going to holler at you later, man. All right, peace. All right, peace. All right, so who else we got up in here, people? Who else we got up in here? Dylan Hillerman was popping. <laughs> Going on. Yo, what's poppin'? Who's this? Yo, what up, man? This is Greg, man. What up, Greg? What up, Macario? I'm chillin'. Where you from, Greg? Where you from, man? Man, I'm, da- I'm down here in ATL, man. I right. wanted to actually call you and tell you, man, you know, just like the other brother telling you. Yeah, you were definitely on point with a lot of stuff, man. Um, I'm going to tell you about, like, a strange story, man. The day I had, I had looked at my phone, right? Right. I've been campaigning, like, for over a month or something. Just, you know, just running into chicks, passing my number out, um, mm. dealing with attention whores and et cetera, whatever. Right. So now my season is coming back around where they choose. And, well, like, they make out the blue call my, my phone or text me, and I might call them, and they actually picking up and we talking and shit. Right. And so I had a conversation with, you know, a quick conversation that, like you said, don't be on the phone, have no drawn out conversations and get to the point. Mm. I got to the point with a couple of them and I pretty much set up a date like, hey, when we're free, we're going to get together. For the most part, most of them don't agree to it. Then I had this one hit me out the blue. Mm. Like, I swear, like, I passed out my number so much just campaigning. Mm. Like, I'm sure you had this happen to you before. Right. Where I honestly don't even remember the chick. Right, right. Like, exactly. I, like she texts me, like, a long text, too, when she's trying to, like, get up with me and see me. Mm. Like, I had to actually go on, like, you know, you could put somebody's phone number sometime in on Facebook or whatever, mm-hmm. you could pull up their page. Right. So I'm like, man, who is this chick texting me? I know it's someone I gave my number to. Mm. So I, I pulled up her page, and I the face looked familiar, but I swear I can't even remember why I even met her at a win or, or none of that stuff. So right. the only thing I know is, I'm like, damn, I called her real quick just to confirm it, you know, who we was texting. She trying to, I guess she trying to get down, man. Um, mm-hmm. She hit me up out the blue. Like, it, that's, that's, that's just crazy. I don't even know if she's somebody I charged to the game. Right. She, <laughs> I, I don't remember nothing about it. Like, and I feel good being that way because it just lets me further know, like, that's just how much I really don't care about these brawls. Like, right, I'm, right. I meet them, I meet them so much and, and, and forget about them, like, so quickly, man, until they hit me up or something. Mm-hmm. And what I, wanted, what I wanted to ask you was, like, okay... In a situation like when you meet them, as far as like being honest and upfront with them, like I, I hear like different people like have different methods saying, mm. man, talk a little bit more or whatever. Mm. Like you don't honestly see nothing too much wrong with, let's say, like I said, I got them on the phone today mm. and it's the way I worded it. I was just honest with them. I'm like, hey, you know, what are you, what are you looking for? What you what you after? And I let them say they little spill. I already know what I'm finna come with next. Mm. And I tell them what I'm about. I pretty much, I leave them two options. Either we can be friends that's um, companions at the same time or what can lean toward a relationship level. Mm. Do you think that's too much for somebody that's having a first time conversation with them? Yeah, the telling thing them is, I'm coming from. Well, the thing is, the thing is this, is that, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to like, at first, lay anything down too heavy. You understand what I'm saying? When it comes okay. to first interacting with chicks, right? So you don't even need, need to really ask them, like, what they're looking for, you understand? Because that's usually what chicks ask. Chicks will ask you what you're looking for because they want to see if you're looking or if you're going to provide them with what they want. So they're like, so what are you looking for? And then let's say they want a relationship, you understand? And you say, oh, I'm just chilling or whatever and blah, blah, blah. She might be like, oh, but, I, you know, I want a relationship and all this other stuff, you understand? So that conversation, okay. a lot of times lends itself to to for, for you know both parties men and women to sort of like put up this wall it's like oh well you're looking for this and i'm looking for that then fuck it we shouldn't talk you know what i'm saying so 
the thing is, is it's always best to not even bring that up in a lot of cases. You understand what I'm saying? Like, just like it's so you, you got to sort of leave it like really, like really light. It's just sort of okay. We get each other's numbers. We call each other for real quick to set up a date. We go on a date. We get a drink. And we just get to know each other. Like all of that. Like talking about like what you know. What do you want? And what did, what did, what do I want? And all this other stuff. It doesn't really need to be said. Now, the only time you really say it or even talk about it a lot of times is that is if she brings it up you feel what i'm saying so because oh, usually okay. right because usually she might bring it up and then she might be like oh so you know what are you looking for and blah 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 you understand what i'm saying so the thing is you know depending on what you're looking for you understand what i'm saying like you can you could just be straight up and be like look i'm looking for this or i'm looking for that you understand? Now, if you want, if you want the like the really smooth answer, you know what I'm saying? This is usually the smooth answer to 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 give because usually chicks they be on that like, oh, you know, I want, uh, I'm looking for a relationship, yada yada yada. Now, if you're not looking for a relationship, right, you could just tell a chick, look, I'm not really looking for that. I'm just trying to chill, see where shit goes or whatever. I'm trying to hook up, whatever it is. You could just let them know. You understand? But if you want the smooth answer, you understand? You could be like, hey, look, you know. Um, I'm not really, uh, looking for, you know, anything to happen, but I'm not opposed to anything happening. You understand? So you're, it's basically saying like, I'm not really looking for something, but I'm not opposed to anything happening or, or looking for something to happen. Cause a lot of chicks, what happens is, is that if, if you're, you know, if they're like, oh, I'm looking for a relationship and you just like, hey, I just want to fuck a chick in the ass. You understand? She's going to be like, oh, well, that's not what I'm looking for. And it's going to be a whole goofy ass type of thing. But the same way to say, hey, I'm just I'm not looking for anything too serious is saying, hey, you know, I'm not really you know, I'm not really looking for anything. But if anything occurs, I'm not going to, you know, I might not turn it away. You understand which is this, which is the truth, because you don't really know what you're going to be feeling later on in the future. You see what I'm saying? So it's it's like it's a, it's sort of like a, a PC political answer, but it gets you past uh, the that little wall or barrier that might happen when you first start talking to a chick. See, because the thing is, the part that sucks a lot of times is that in those conversations, when it when when girls bring up that oh, so what are you looking for and blah 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 blah, it's easy for them to dismiss you or to like shut shit down emotionally because you're saying something that's opposite to what they want. You feel what I'm saying? So that's that's the thing. But the thing is too, you don't want to be you don't want to be dishonest, but the thing is is that you don't want to fall into the trap of uh, you know, just sort of like um having too much of a conversation about that. You see what I mean? So you sort of you you're sort of leaving it open uh, by saying it in, in, in that sort of way without directly saying something to just focus on that conversation. You see what I mean? Because chicks, they just like, you know, if they have that energy of, oh, I'm looking for a relationship. I'm tired of playing games. I want a man who's blah, 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 blah. You understand? It's like, you know, you don't you don't you don't want to you don't want to directly go into, uh, hey, I, I want a relationship too mode just to lie to them if that's not what you want. But at the same time. You don't want to go too, too heavy on some, yeah, I'm just looking for bitches to fuck, you understand, type of energy, because that's going to probably make them fall back. So you want to be somewhere in the middle anytime that a chick brings that up. You see what I'm saying? Like, the reason the reason I mm. was sometimes bringing them up, like like everybody had talked about those attention whores mm. before, mm. and what, I, what I've noticed from dealing with um, some women, like, they probably wasn't going to bring up in a lot of times what you're looking for because mm-hmm. what I figured out with some of them, some of them just, they were just on the bullshitting around anyway. Like, they mm-hmm. already got what they got going on. They just, you know, they looking for a phone buddy and some kind of game. Mm-hmm. So since I kind of, like, detected that out of some of them, mm-hmm. and I, that probably was my the wrong approach that I took, like, straight up asking them. But, like, mm-hmm. I felt like that was my way, like, because with me personally, honestly, mm-hmm. I don't want to even see you again mm-hmm. if you opposed to the fact of sleeping with me. Right. And for me, I guess, like, for me to even figure it out, like, for one, like I said, like, I would get on the phone with them, and I, I try to test them out. I flirt. I don't do, like, these average guys that have, mm. like, regular bullshit conversation. Like, I do that a little bit on the phone with them, mm. but I also flirt with them, too, because I'm trying to see how she's going to react to my advances on me flirting. Right. And so if I see sometimes, a lot of times, if she's not reacting too much in a flirtatious way, she's keeping it too plain and too vague. Mm. A lot of that sometimes it will motivate me to just straight up put her 
in a scenario where I'm going to ask her straight up now, let me stop the game. Hey, what are you looking for? Mm. So by me doing that with her, I feel like that's keeping me from even showing up at a bar or even get to that point where the next day come up, me trying to invite her somewhere out because some women are even, I figured this out, some women will even go as far as to come someplace with you. They still know they're not attracted. They still know they ain't trying to do nothing with you. They'll actually show up somewhere. And then you out there water, you trying to make the moves on and everything, and you ain't really talked about, you know, how you really feel or to even see if she's even down with your program. Mm. And now you're going to be feeling funny. You're going to be like, man, I done came out here, and this chick don't even sexually desire me. She on this bullshit friend zone stuff. Or she well, and, me. See, and but see, that's, you that's, know, the, and, that's, the, that's the, the actual ironic part about the whole thing is that you got to actually be in front of her for for you to really know if she's trying to get sexual with you. You see what I'm saying? See, you're trying to see what you're doing is you're you're calling her, you're texting her, whatever. You're sort of speaking to her first and trying to figure out if she's into it, and then you want to go see her. You see what I'm saying? But yeah, that's what I've been doing a lot. Right. You see what I'm saying? But th- that's the thing. You actually have to be in front of her in order for you to really see if she's going to get sexual. So you, so the thing is, you still have to actually go in front, you, you still got to meet her. You feel what I'm saying? Like you still got to be face to face to actually see. And see, that's the, that's the problem. And this is the problem that, that woman, and this is what I'm saying, that a lot of women do this. See, women, because like if you meet a chick on Tinder, and I, I've had this shit happen a million fucking times, right? Where I'll match with a girl on Tinder, uh-huh. Right, and then so she'll 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 like match with me or whatever, and we, we might even be you know going talking back and forth real quick, and I'm trying to I'm trying to set the date because I already know I'm like I gotta get her to meet me in person, like that's the goal. Uh-huh. Like if if we don't meet in person, like if if I don't get her to meet me in person as soon as possible, I already know most likely this shit's gonna crumble because of of you know my situation. So for example, on my Tinder thing, it says. You know, I'm in an open relationship, right? So now, sometimes the chicks, they'll see that the, that uh, it says I'm in an open relationship. So some chicks, they're not down for that. They're, they'll just automatically be like, no, I don't, you know, I can't do that. They'll be like, oh, I just see that. I saw that you're in an open relationship. I just checked out your profile again and blah, blah, blah. So now the reason why they it's easy for them to dismiss me is because of the whatever notion they have of what they think is going to happen based off of me being an open relationship. So they already come to their preconceived notions. But a lot of times what happens is is that I meet girls and then they don't even realize I'm in an open relationship because they don't fucking read the fucking profile or they don't or they forget or whatever it is. So they meet me in person and then they'll be like, oh, wait a second, they'll see my ring. And they'll be like, are you married? I'm like, yeah, I'm in an open relationship. It says it on my profile, right? So at that moment, they're still sort of like taken aback, like what, you know? But since I'm in front of them, now it's easier for me to build the sexual tension because we're there. So now I can I'd be like, yeah, don't worry about that. You know, I, I date other women who because they, usually they're like, I just want to be in a monogamous relationship. I'm like, yeah, you can do that. You can still meet another guy, be in a monogamous relationship with him, blah, blah, blah. So I'm talking to them. I'm doing this and doing that. I'm touching them. I'm flirting with them. So now that thing that would have made them say no, which was the open relationship, doesn't matter anymore because I've created the sexual tension in person. So it doesn't matter what you say to the girl on her phone. You got to get her in person to create that sexual tension to really see if she's down. Because chicks will, they'll they'll pretend that they don't want to do shit or they'll act like they don't want to do shit just on the phone or online. But when they're in front of you and they feel that energy, they feel that touch that you give them, they feel that game that you spit in, that's what creates the sexual tension. That's what creates them wanting to actually do shit. You see what I'm saying? Okay, I see what you're saying now because it actually, dang, you know what, it actually, um puts me back in a state of mind like when I was off in college right mm-hmm. but this was like my beginning stage and I was just like really running through women at one mm-hmm. point like I wouldn't even like I knew I wanted to sleep with them but I wouldn't tell them that like what I would do with them was at one point I would get them on the phone mm-hmm. and everything that you're saying itself like you would get off with them very quickly but I, I held those conversations but mm-hmm. pretty much I got them on the phone I would have these great conversations and flirt a little bit and do all that stuff but I wouldn't say nothing about sex and it would be even women that I was talking to on the phone at that time. Mm-hmm. They may have mentioned it and said, yeah, I don't do such and such. And I and I downplay it like I'm like I'm mm-hmm. not interested in it or whatever. But when I got them in person mm-hmm. and met up with them in person from MySpace or when I met up with them again, I think we exchanged numbers. 
I'm off in a quiet setting with them, whether it's in their car or whether I was in my dorm room, wherever we was at. Mm. Man, I'm, I make it close and start touching them and trying them, and, and it actually went down, and I didn't even discuss it mm. because at that point I felt like if I mention it, I sound like every other guy, and she's not gonna do it. Right, right. So, you know, so I, I so are you pretty much saying in so many ways, like I probably kind of need the result back to because that did kind of work, but that was like years ago. I was yeah, younger. yeah, that's what, that's what I'm saying. Are like, you, like don't even don't even worry about having any really types of conversations with them on the phone or online because I always tell guys you you want because this is the thing you're going to meet girls where the shit's not going to work out um, regardless you know and then there's going to be girls you're going to meet where it's going to work out now but the thing is is that this, you still got to meet them you still got to meet them in person for to really see what's going to go down you see what I'm saying? So all no, you need, I'm saying like in terms of like when it comes to the talking to them, like, okay, I already know what my intentions is. Mm. Like in terms of me getting on the phone with them talking about, hey, you know, I'm I'm down with this and I'm trying to do X, Y, and Z. Like instead of me saying that, just, you know, kind of flirt, create energy and just mainly see if she's trying to meet me in person. And then when we mm. found each other, then I can kind of try like how I've been trying a lot of the other ones. Because, mm-hmm. like, lately, like you said, like, me saying that, because a lot of, you right, a lot of women do say that, like, hey, what are you looking for? Mm-hmm. And the only reason I started doing it because I figured there was a way to early on get them off the phone with me so they couldn't use me for attention or none of that mm-hmm. stuff. Right, and, but, but the, you know, the, the thing is yeah. this, the thing is this, too, is that for the, when you're, when you're, when you're hitting them up on the phone or you're texting them online or you're texting them on the phone, it's only supposed to be to set up the date. That's it. Like, you really shouldn't even be... Like, if you talk to a girl on the phone, it shouldn't uh-huh. be no more than, like, two or three minutes of that much, right? Okay. I'm about to catch cold and shit. But anyway, so you, you should only be talking to them too. So, like, let's say, for example, you get a girl's number, um, you know, even on the street. You get a girl's number and you say, hey, you know, and you, you hit her up and you say, hey, what's up? What you doing uh, next week, Friday? She's like, oh, I'm free. Okay, cool. We should get together, get a drink, you know, at, at 8 o'clock at the Main Street Bar. She's like, all right, cool. That sounds good. All right, cool. So, you know, I'm, um, I'll see you on Friday. That's it. Like, literally, that's all your conversation needs to be. Even if you're texting a girl, it's like, hey, what are you doing Friday? I'm free. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Let's meet up this day, and then that's it. That's all your your um, your 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 game needs to be when you are contacting these women. Strictly set up. That's it. Now, once you set it up and when she comes to see you, then you do all the extra shit. You see what I'm saying? All of the, the, the figuring shit out and building sexual tension and all of that, it should be done in person. Never on the phone. Oh, okay. You I, got you. I, I got you. I got I see what you're saying now right. with it. Right. But like, yeah, that, yeah that's, a, that's, that's a good little way. And like I said, like mm-hmm. definitely, because I think I, I slick did that too today. Um, just from listening to you, like the ones I, I just passed my number out and I got like, let me see, like out of everybody, I got like three of them that seemed like they cooperative. Mm. We had a good conversation today, but I pretty much quickly said, yo, you know, when's the next time you free before that conversation ended? Right. And basically what I was doing was what you just talked about. I pretty much like set up another day. I got one time I seen me this weekend mm. and then there's another one. The one I told you hit me out of the blue. I, I don't even remember where she came from. Right. And the other one was talking about, you know, she's open to the idea of seeing me. And I'm definitely going to meet some more tomorrow. So right. I see what you're saying. Just kind of meet them. But is there any way possible, like like, like you said, like, don't talk to them all day over the phone. But can I still kind of a little bit, just flirt with them a little bit just to, just so they won't be in surprise. So I can kind of get them an idea like, well, see, that's he the just thing. ain't the average guy. This see. guy hit me. See, so, that's, that's the thing, though. If you, with me, huh? No, what I'm saying is if you... See, this is the thing. You can actually call a chick and flirt with her and do a lot of other stuff, but uh-huh. there's a way to do it where you have to be very skilled at keeping the momentum up. And so... But it's like, that's like a whole other thing that most guys don't really know how to like do because... It's a thing where you're keeping the momentum and the the momentum up sexually to where she's sexually uh, turned on and excited to see you. So that's a whole different like topic. You feel what I'm saying? What I'm saying is is that just in general to to keep things flowing in an easier way is to just really set the date up and then meet her. Because the thing is, if you don't really know how to really talk to these girls in these situations, what it does is that it gives them reasons to not see you you understand what i'm saying see this this is what i always tell dudes 
for this is what it is. Men, us men, we generally look for things about a woman to like. You understand? So we look at her, we like, okay, well, she got a fat ass. She ain't she ain't that pretty, but she got a fat ass. So I'll fuck with her. You understand? Like that's how we think. Women, on the other end, they're looking for flaws to give them an excuse not to fuck with us. Do you understand what I'm saying? So the okay. thing is, is that by you talking to a lot on the phone, by you asking them all these questions on the phone, by you doing extra stuff on the phone, it's giving her an easier way to rationalize flaking on you. Do you see what I'm saying? And so that's... Uh, okay, see, okay. See and then, saying, right? then that way it takes away the fact that I could be a mystery because if I haven't ran my mouth on the phone exactly. so much, she got something exactly. else to look forward to when she actually does see it. Exactly. And now, if you... Let's say, for example, when you meet the girl in person, right? There's uh-huh. stuff that you do in person that if you did on the phone, it would be, it would be looked at as worse. But because you're in person with her... There's, there's, there's like, it, she'll let certain things slide. You understand what I'm saying? Because you oh, might say cool. something on the phone and she's like, oh, it's, that's kind of lame. But if I, if I say the same exact thing in person, even if she'd have thought it was lame, I still got my arm around her. You feel what I'm saying? So now, oh, it's, you see what I mean? Okay. So it's, it's, it's a little bit more, it's a little bit more of, of a, of a, of a different type of vibe. So this is what I'm saying. Like when you meet them, just set the date. And that's it. And then you see them on the date. Once you see them on a date, then you just go in like heavy. You feel what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. And I know what my date going to be at the park, but I know other right. folks trying to call you and ask you questions right. and stuff like that. But I just wanted to clarify that situation. So I'm going I'm to I'm stop doing it. I tell you, I'm yeah, going to stop what I'm saying. telling stop. them when I first get them on the phone. Right. Right. Just I'm set that quit. date. And yeah. I'm going to quit doing that with them because <laughs> I was just trying to. Because I got rid of a bunch of women doing it. Now that I look back at it, I probably got rid of some women that probably could have been potential fuck exactly. makers or whatever. Exactly, right, right. You know, by me just saying that. Right, exactly. All right, man, I'm going to holler at you, bro, all right? All right, man. All right, later, peace. But yeah, that's what I'm saying. You guys got to make sure, you know, you're doing it right. Because these chicks, they be, dude, they be looking for reasons, bro. They'll be looking for reasons. And this, again, goes with, how to position yourself to make sex easier for you or to make sex happen. Because you got to know how to, you know, orchestrate all that shit. You feel what I'm saying? That's how you got to do it. Oh, for those who were asking about the audio book, you can get it on MrLocario.com. I might have it on Audible soon. What's going on? What's popping? Who's this? It's Ronnie. What up? What's going on, bro? All right. What's popping with you? Hey, um, uh, I got a couple of questions though. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, um, uh, when you talk to women, talking to women, right? Mm-hmm. And they be talking. When you ask them a question, they ask you a question, but they keep talking and talking and talking about nothing like that's concerning you. They they just talk this to babble. Mm-hmm. And right. my question is, how can you stop her from talking so much on something? That's not important. Well, that's 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 because you gotta you gotta be the one that's like controlling the direction of the conversation. You see what I'm saying? So yeah, a lot of times chicks will start babbling because they're nervous or you know they 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 just kind of like keep shit going. But you know if you are sort of controlling the direction of the conversation, then you get her on course to talking about something else or you or you're basically um, you know creating a situation for where you want the situation to go because that's the point of you talking to the girl because you want to make sure that what you're saying and what you're doing is leading in the direction of making the conversation and the situation go the way you want it to go so a lot of times when chicks are really just babbling and talking about a whole bunch of shit it's because you're not basically directing the conversation in any way you see what i'm saying yeah boy my question is how you do that so, okay, so for example, like, let's say a chick, she's babbling and talking about Rihanna or some shit, or fucking some, you know, uh, Lil Uzi Vert or something, and she's like, oh yeah, I like that Lil Uzi Vert song, because, you know, he was talking about this, and then he had this other song that I like, and blah, 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 or whatever, and then you'd be like, oh, that's cool, but, you know, what, what else do you like besides music? Like, what else do you do? You feel what I'm saying? So now, you're getting her off that topic into something else. You understand? So she oh, might you change the subject. Right. You change the subject or you'd be like, so you change the subject. Now you're talking about something else. 
or and or what you're supposed to do is when you're talking to a girl or you're interacting with her, you should already have sort of like a goal in mind of where you are trying to go with the situation. So let's say if I meet a girl at a bar and I see her and I think she's hot. So my goal in my head is I want to take her back to my, my spot. So yeah, all of my, my, my conversation and everything that I'm doing should be leading me in that direction. So if she's talking about Rihanna and Lil Uzi Vert and all that other stuff, you know, that's not going to be anything that's going to lead me to, you know what I'm saying, to, to, to making that type of shit happen. So I'll ask her a question, another question about something else to change the topic. Then I might start talking about, you know, um, I might start just focusing the conversation on her as far as me talking about her. You know what I mean? That's And that gets me to flirting. So then now that I'm flirting, then it gets me to, you know, I can start kissing her, doing all other stuff. And then now I'm like, OK, hey, let's get out of here because now she's all riled up because I, I took her from talking about some nonsensical shit to getting her to kiss me, to getting her to leave with me. You see what I mean? But it all came from me having the conversation and steering it in a different direction. You see what I mean? So like if she's talking about music, so if she's talking about like music or something, I might say, oh, so what else do you like to do besides music or listen to music? And then she might be like, oh, well, you know, I like to, to, to go to the movies and shit. And then I'll be like, oh, did you see this movie? called so-and-so it was like mad crazy it had a lot of like sex in it and all this other stuff and then you know and i'll be like do you like to watch movies where it's like graphic sex and all that other stuff so now i'm just getting her into the conversation of sex and then so she's like oh yeah i saw this other movie called such and such and it was like crazy because it had a lot of sex in it and then now i'll be like you know talking about sex you know you have some sexy ass lips you see what i'm saying so now so i went from her yeah. talking about the music to her saying something about the movies then me mentioning the sex movie then me actually talking about how sexy her lips is and then to me flirting with her. You see what I'm saying? So all you're doing is guiding the conversation. You see what I'm saying? That's what you got to oh, do. Oh, yeah, yeah. So so basically, like, when she started talking about me, like, she started talking about the Migos, and mm. I ain't trying to hear about the Migos. Right. I could change the subject by saying, hey, did you see that movie that, right. that had a girl and she had some, it, it was kind of fake, but she had a big fake behind Right, right. Anything. You could just... You and could then, just right, and then y'all start talking then, about that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and then... I'm, she might say, yeah, she saw that or what, uh, whatnot, and then I might say, speaking of ass, you know, you got a real nice one, too. Right, exactly, right. You see what I'm saying? You see how you, you just went from that to that to that. You see what I mean? So now you're controlling the, con the direction, and then it gets her focused on whatever you're bringing out. You see what I mean? Yeah, and that's that's all you got to do. That's all you got to do, cause that cause yeah. that's so, the thing that leads so you. So my my next question. So my next question is like, like uh, based on what we were just talking about, um, mm -hmm. about controlling the flow of the conversation. Like, mm -hmm. is it okay if if I if I want to talk to her about certain things mm -hmm. that's going to lead to me and her going going to us? Specific spot? Do I have to keep doing that when she when I, when I get when I get her to my spot too? As far as what, like switching up the conversations and stuff like that? Do I have to do I have to continue that cycle? Well, this is because the thing. All, all you need to do is once you once you get to this to the point where you want to be, then you're there. You see what I mean? So you don't really have to do much at that point, except for except for uh, you know, keeping that vibe going. So now the only thing though is, let's say you get her, <clears throat> you know, back to your spot or to some other spot or whatever. And then she's, then, then she starts to talk about other shit. You understand what I'm saying? Then you got to bring it back to where you want her to talk to. So the only time you need to keep doing it like that is if she goes back, she, if she backtracks to talking about something else that you don't want to talk about or you don't want the conversation to go. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah. So that's my what third, you need to my do. Third qu so go ahead. My third go? question is, mm. my third question is, um, like, so, because I was, I was, I was up wondering, is it okay to uh, bring up stuff in the current events to start a conversation? You saying to bring up current events? Yeah, like something that that's happened on the news, or, mm. or something that went down on, in my neighborhood yesterday, or mm. some like current events, mm. you know. 
Yeah, I mean, when you when you first start in like when it's small talk, yeah, you can talk about current events or whatever. You, but the thing is, you don't want to you don't want to talk about anything too heavy, you understand, or too too uh, like politically charged or whatever. Because again, uh, when you're talking to women, you still have to take into account um, emotion. So you might say something that triggers some sort of negative emotion in her and and, then, and this is also you being able to see the vibe of the girl and seeing how she responds to things but you don't want to say anything too crazy that's going to get lead to like an argument or lead to you know some other extra crazy shit unless you know how to talk about it in a way where it's either humorous or like let's say for example you talk about trump and then let's say you know um you're making fun of him or something where it's funny or whatever it is you understand then it's a different story but if you're talking about like you know um 10 people dying in a, in a plane crash and then now she's feeling a certain way because one of her family members just died yesterday and it's just like now you're getting into this whole conversation about death and it's just ruining the mood you feel what i'm saying so a lot of right. times you just that's gotta why, yeah you just gotta that's look why i'll be one that's why i'll be one to say like you know just get it i just stay i just stay off current events and just talk about what i see like it right. could be anything like in a situation Mm -hmm. right and and the thing is it's yeah. just it's just you know you got to just make sure that whenever whatever type of conversations you're having um you got to it's like you got to do a few things you got to be able to um flow with the conversation control or guide the the direction of the conversation and you have to see her reactions to what you're saying you understand so you got to do both of those things you see what i mean I said, what if she's a Trump so supporter? I <laughs> so I gotta see. So I gotta see. Um, based on, I gotta control the flow of the conversation. Mm -hmm. And uh, and what else you said? And also watch her reactions to what's being said. Right. You see what I'm saying? Because right. because it, it, again, it's 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 like a dance you're doing. You're 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 saying things, and you're seeing her reaction to what you're saying, and then by her reaction, it'll tell you where to sort of go next in the conversation or where to keep it going. So if you say something, you see her reaction is positive where she's either, you know, like uh, laughing about something or she seems interested in what's being said, then, you you know, you keep that going and you keep it going in a direction. If she seems like, you know, she's uncomfortable about what you're saying, just change the subject to something else and then start talking on that to get her back on track to being, you know, comfortable in the situation. You see what I mean? So it's, it's, uh, okay. you know, <laughs> it's how you do it. You feel me? Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, basically, like, even when I'm starting a conversation, mm -hmm. I want to start off, like, doing a little small talk and then I turn and I change and I direct the flow of the conversation by changing the subject if it goes farther away from what I plan on doing with her mm -hmm. and then I could I could do it like that right right exactly exactly and make sure yeah, that yeah. a lot of your conversation is leading towards flirting you understand and then building that sexual tension in a situation you see what I mean because then you get the conversation going to a point where she starts to see you as that guy that she's thinking about sex with and all that other stuff you feel what I'm saying yeah one more thing, one more thing. Mm -hmm. um, so, during the conversation, like, if I want to have sex with her, even though I could use something about what I want to tell her, I could use some type of things that was in the movie. Like, say, like I said earlier about the big butt situation, mm -hmm. not the movie. Mm -hmm. If I, I could use that to tell her that she had a nice booty, mm -hmm. well, just based off... Go ahead, what are you saying? What I was saying was, like, we, we was talking earlier, like, if I say I see the movie and then it was a bunch of girls that had fake behinds, mm. you know, like, the plastic studs on their behind, they get that, too. So I could use that to tell her that, yeah, you got a nice ass, but you, your, yours, the reason yours is nice because you don't have no fake implants like the, these girls have in these days. Right, right. You can say, you can definitely say that. And also, too, what you got to understand is this, is that... Within the conversations, right? Whatever you you know, whatever you're talking about, you also have to use um, your body language. Meaning that you could be, you could literally be talking about almost anything with a chick. But if I'm if I'm talking to a chick and I got my arm around her as I'm talking to her, you feel what I'm saying? 
that body language is showing me flirt flirting and me sort of like trying to build sexual tension by me having her that close to me you see what i'm saying so as i'm as i'm controlling the conversation and controlling the flow of the conversation what i'm doing is i'm also uh physically um you know creating sexual tension as i'm talking to her you see what i'm saying so it's like you're doing all of this stuff at once you see what i mean yeah yeah like like i like say if it's like when i'm flirting creating sexual tension with using body language mm. i can get close to her and i can hug her right right exactly and you i can, can walk away right yeah. you can walk away you can talk all that shit while you're doing it you feel me so, you know, that's how that go. But, yo, yeah. let me, I got to get a few more of these calls. This dude is calling in like crazy, all right? So, I'm, I'm going to have to holler at you in a minute, all right? All right. All right, bro, I'm going to holler at you. Peace. All right, who is this? What's popping? Who's this? Yeah, what's popping? This is Lucario, man. This is G, man. What up? Where you from? Jersey, Jersey, man. Right, right next to you, bro. All right, that's what's up, bro. What's going on with you? Hey man, ain't much man. I'm out here on the job and shit, man. I seen the little, uh, seen your little uh, chat line. I wanted to hit you up. That's what's up. Question, That's what's right? Up. What's going on with you? Yeah, uh, about a month ago, about a month ago, I met little Shorty and shit. Mm -hmm. And uh, I met outside in the little parking lot while she was going in and get some stuff. Mm -hmm. And we started chatting and shit. You know what I mean? Like I built tension with everything was good, man. I mean, like Shorty looked good, fat ass and everything, bro. She right. Face and Right off the jump, man, like, she was feeling me, too, because I was all over her waistline. She was hugging me. Right. I was all over her ass. And push things up forward, you know, like, to get things on um, real quick. Um, you know, I had to be the one to tell her, yo, you know, she, I'm about to go home and get some sleep because, you know, I work at night. Mm -hmm. So it was pretty much me that ended the conversation. Like, she really wasn't going nowhere. No, like, she was there the whole time just right. vibing with me. Everything was good. So long story short, uh, about a week from me, you know, I set up a date to meet up with her and everything. I told her, yo, you know, what you doing on Saturday? Mm -hmm. She, uh, she was available. She's like, yeah, you know, we, we can meet up. And then, I bet. So I set that up. Right. The whole week, the whole week went by. She was in contact. Actually, she was the one reaching out to me, which is another thing I see people don't ask me on some of the chat mm -hmm. about when you meet a female. You don't reach out to them. You just maintain, you know, maintain minimal contact and shit like that. And right. They reach out to you. What do you do? So she was reaching out to me. Right. Mm -hmm. She was calling me, want to text me and talk. And, right. You know, I, I kept it. I kept it at a very minimal. You know, mm -hmm. it's like she called me today. I answer, but you know, I answer when it's convenient to me. Mm -hmm. And we talk for a very short, which is probably like a minute or two. Very short, and I'm always constantly letting you know, letting her know I'm busy, which I am busy. So. Right. But long story short, uh, the day comes, and she hit me up. we trying to meet up, right? Mm -hmm. So I had already set up a plan on where to meet and everything like that. Right. So I call her up. Hey, you know, we're going to meet up at the spot. What's up? You know, like, you ready and everything? We, we, we still going to make this happen? She's like, yeah, but change the plan. Like, she, wanna have a, she wanted to meet up in a different place. So uh. she had in mind we was going to go somewhere else. That she, you know, that she thought of. I'm like, oh, nah, she nah. ain't about to work like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, nah, I'm like, nah, nah, nah. We agreed to go to my spot. So where all this comes from, right? So me being me, I'm not about to sit down and just uh, uh, do a whole debate about why this and that. I'm I'm kind of just up for, you know, like up straight and, you know, forward with women. Right. So I'm like, nah, I'm like, nah, and I'm not going to back down. I'm like, nah, we're not going to that spot. And she, mm. you know, she, so she's trying to stand still with me, too. She's like, oh, well, then, you know, like, I'm not feeling the spot you're talking about. And I'm like, give me a reason why. She couldn't give me a reason. Right. She just was like, how you be saying? She's being very challenging and shit like that. And I'm like, man, that's, you know, problematic. You know, right, I'm not right, no exactly. With you. I'm not going to put up with shit like that. And me, you know, I mean, it might sound kind of, you know, for you know, for the sensitive ears out there, it might sound insensitive and shit, but in my eyes, it's not insensitive. It's right. just being quite frank. So I'm like, you know, there's a lot of women out here, like, you, know, you don't want to come with my program. It is what it is. Right. So I pretty much, you know, I pretty much just told that at the end. I was like, well, look, you know, you do decide and change your mind about things. You know where I stand. You decide to change your mind about hooking up with me and this and that. 
Mm-hmm. You know, you don't gotta call me, but you got my number. You know, right? And so, what, and so what happened with, with her? Did she, did she? Did she? Uh, yeah. Did she hit you back or anything? Or what happened with that? Yeah, yeah, she hit me back. Now mm-hmm. this is the funny thing. She hit me back. We had a we had a cool, elaborate conversation. You know, like very short, mm-hmm. very cool. So she was pretty much asking me, "So what are you trying to do?" And mm-hmm. I flat out told her, "I was like, well, you know, let's meet in person and talk." She right. wasn't trying to make that happen. She was being a little dodgy here and there. Oh my so god! I said, okay. Yeah, so I said, okay, so this so this is one of them slippery motherfuckers want to mm. play games. So I just flat out told her, I was like, yo, you know, I want to hook up with you. Mm. And she like, what that mean? I'm like, yo, you know, I see what I like. You know, I'm a dude, mm. and I'm interested in you. I'm sexually attracted to you. She like, oh my gosh. I'm like, yeah, I'm sexually attracted to you. That's the only reason why I approached you. If I wasn't sexually attracted to you. I would have never stepped up to you. What right. am I going to do? I step up to a cripple with one eye and no right. with them, but that's not what I like. So I saw you, got the ass, the face. You know what I'm saying? You seemed like you was cool. You know what I'm saying? So I stepped up to you, wanted to talk. And she like, so that all you want? All you want to do is fuck me? I was like, look, you know, I'd like to fuck you. That's definitely true. Right. But, you know, what, what's the problem? You know, what's the problem? You know, right. like, you, you know, what's going on? What's up? I've got time for these games. And she was like, oh, you know, I'm, I, I don't do the whole hook up and fuck people. And I was like, all right, well, that's, you know, that's who I am. I was like, well, that's who I am. You know, like, she like, oh, so you, you do this, you know, with a lot of girls, you meet them? I'm like, yeah, you know. She like, ah, oh, so that's all. So that's why you look at women as, like, sex objects. I'm like, not sex objects, but, you know. I'm attracted to women. Like, what the fuck you want me to do? <laughs> right, right. And so, and so, what happened? Yeah. So, that, so then, what happened after that? She, she just was on some. Man, she flaked, man. She basically flaked. So right. I set up another day with her. I set up another day with her, and I and I told her. I told her. I said, look, on Friday, I'm off on Friday. Uh, I'm gonna call you on Thursday. Right. You know, you know reconfirm shit. She like, okay, sure. You know, I'm talking about man. She sounded golden. Everything gonna be good but you know i'm not relying on just one chick right so i'm like whatever if it happens it happens it don't hey, keep it pushing man it's too many it's too many females out here right. that be dwelling on one chick right so long story short on thursday i hit her up i call her uh she waits about a couple of hours Think, be, be honest with you i even forgot because i already had set up two other dates and mm. one of them actually showed up the other one was on some bullshit too, just like her so you know when she finally hit me up mm. i was actually with the other girl so right. she hits me up real late. I, you know, I ain't bother to answer. So, you know, me and the other girl, we get to it. And um, afterwards, it's like late in the morning. We're like three in the morning. So I hit her back. I'm like, oh, what's going on? You know, what's up? Right. I, I sent her a text message. You know, what's up? And she hit me back instantly. She's like, oh, you know, what happened? I was like, what you mean what happened? <laughs> what are you talking about? She like, oh, weren't we supposed to meet up? Mm. And I was like, what? I, I just ain't bother to respond to her, you know? Right. I set up a date to meet up with her at 6 o'clock. Right. She calls me. She calls me. It was like 11 o'clock. I'm like in a room with the other girl. We about to fuck. So <laughs> it's like, what kind of games are you playing? Like, you know, I just ain't entertaining shit. So wait, did, you, next day, did, did, you, did yeah. you get to did you get to smash it, though? Did you get to smash? Nah, nah. I didn't smash it. I didn't smash it. She, she, she. You know, in my opinion, maybe you can help me with this, right? right. In my opinion, I feel like she kind of had like a little ego complex along the way. Though. Right. You know, it's kind of well, like... Well, this the thing. This the thing. Like some, this the thing with hurt. this chick, though. This the thing with this chick. Like, yeah. she's she's one of those chicks who, you know, she's she she wants you to want her even though she don't want you. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And there's a lot of chicks like that where... They want you to sort of come after them, talk to them, you know, give them attention, all this other stuff, even though they really have no intentions of really doing nothing with you. Or they're not that they're not that into you to the point where they actually want to make shit pop or make shit happen. You see what I mean? And so yes, yes. And so the thing is is that they sort of keep you around for that little ego boost. But ain't nothing really gonna happen because if something's gonna happen, it would have happened already. You know what I'm saying? Like, for sure, for you see, sure. so because just like you messing with the other girl, the other girl shit's popping off, but with her, it ain't popping off. You see what I'm saying? And chicks, oh, yeah. chicks pick and choose, you know, which dudes they're gonna, you know, act a certain way to. You see what I'm saying? So, oh, so, so that girl that you're trying to smash, who's on some, oh, I don't just do the hook up shit. 
she, trust and believe she's hooking up with some dude. You see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. And, and, oh, the, yeah. and the girl that you're hooking up with, she's probably doing the same shit this other girl's doing to you to some other nigga. You see what I'm saying? So, so that's how, so that's how they do. So you gotta make you gotta you gotta understand that they don't be fucking all that other shit they talking is bullshit. Most of the time oh, yeah. like, oh you know I don't do that. I gotta I gotta fucking wait and I gotta I don't know about it. That's nonsense. You see what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah man. That's all that shit is. I, you know I recently subscribed to your channel and um you know, I'm actually gonna get it. I'm actually gonna get one of your books. I got a couple mm. of my little road dogs. I actually pushed on over to your, uh, That's what's your up, bro. YouTube channel, man. Cause you know, like I watch. I don't really watch television much, but mm. you know, I'm more. I'm a, you know, I'm into the YouTube thing and keeping up in social media because I feel right. like you really get more of a. Uh, uh, how you call that? More of a real people's perspective, right? Right. Versus that diluted, that diluted fake bullshit generic stuff. Right. Now, I, I, pre- I appreciate that, man. Well, yo, so, how 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 yo, how tall are you, man? Because they in the chat room, they saying you sound like you six foot eleven and shit. Yeah, and, yeah, bro. I'm six three. I'm six three. For those you know, for the women out there, I'm six three, <laughs> two hundred twenty. I hit the gym a lot. See, is it? You're, you're, a, you're a football yeah, player, I'm, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely. I'm definitely. I'm definitely. You know what I'm saying like. I'm definitely what you would like to say, like, I'm saying, like, I deal, I deal with black men. Right, like, no right. offense to anybody, not to sound like a narcissist and shit, but, <laughs> you know, I'm just hella confident, not cocky, just confident. Like, you, you like, sound you know, like, you, like you sound like you could, saying? you sound like you could whoop niggas' ass. That's <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, like I went, I mean, shit, like I went and fuck with you. you see? If it happens, it happens. But I'm not really into the violence. Shit. I'm all into the fun, man. You know, Yo, I love women. If 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 um, I if I run into you in the street, just 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 have mercy on me, son. Don't don't fuck nah, me up, son. Nah, nah, come on, man. Like you, yo, you, yo, you good money, bro. You, no, come on, man. Uh, money, don't let don't let the voice don't let the voice make me seem like right. I'm some crazy officer. <laughs> right, I feel you. <laughs> I feel you, but yo, dude, I pre- I appreciate you calling in, bro. I appreciate, but nah, brother, just... hey man, I appreciate you, man. And any other YouTube out there, right? Keep, thing, keep doing Much your thing, you. bro. All right, man, I'm all at you. All yeah, right, man. man. Yeah, do sound like I'm gonna have to hire him to be my bodyguard and shit. You know what I'm saying? That dude sound like he'll fuck some motherfuckers up. Shit. Oh man. So what's going on, people? What's what's popping in the chat room? Y'all cats in the chat room be hilarious, though. That shit is... You said that dude sounds like he'll punch you just for talking. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, man, hilarious. Oh, man. That shit is... I said that nigga Shook Knight. <laughs> oh, man, that dude sound like he, he... Man. That shit crazy. But chicks be liking that though, man. He, they, you know, a tall dude that do got a deep ass voice. Chicks be feeling that shit. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, but but that first chick he was talking about, yo, them chicks be fucking. They they love to play those games, man. They want you to fucking uh, you know, be sweating them, and then they they you know they ain't trying to do shit. You feel what I'm saying? Shit is crazy. Shit is crazy. But yeah, guys, you got to make sure you get the book, How to Have Sex with Two Women a Day. Also, um, go to Patreon, man. You guys got to get on the Patreon. I just dropped a video called, uh, what is it, Seven Ways to Upgrade a Chick's Mind. You got to get that shit. Yo, what's popping? Who's this? What up, Kyle? What up? This is, this is James. How's it going? Good, good. Where you from? I. Bronx, New York. That's what's up. What's going on with you? Yeah, man. Hi. Right, so, um, so like basically, like I'm still, um, like I've like called in uh, um, a couple of times in the past, mm. but like anyway, um, uh, like I set like a little plan for myself, like a little you mm. know week, week weekly plan. So like I would do a uh, day one through day five, and I'm on day three right now, mm. and it's really like me, um, you know trying to uh, approach, like, five women a um, day. Mm-hmm. And I've been having, like, issues with that. Like, um, like it's, like, really hard for, for some reason for me to, to take action mm-hmm. and to 
um, you know, like, uh, approach these, like, women. Mm-hmm. Because, like, I've been studying the, the um, game and, like, everything. And, it, and like, I, I feel like, um, I feel like I know the content and everything. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to taking action, I just fold. Uh, like, I'm just, like, like my, um, like, I get, get stage fright in mm-hmm. the moment. So yeah. what do you think about that? Well, the thing is, you know, a lot of it is is just practice because even even hearing you like talking right now, you sound nervous. You know what I'm saying? Like you you yeah. you, you don't sound too comfortable and too sure of yourself. So a okay. lot of it has to do with you first getting comfortable having interactions. You understand and talking to women. This is why it's it's, it's important for you to practice going out there and talking and having conversations. Uh, going back and forth to just you know just being social and it's not even necessarily just with women but just in general just going out being social meeting people talking having uh conversations with different people and so that you'll you'll get like in a habit of just being able to speak and being comfortable speaking you see what i'm saying so because the thing is is that once you once you start getting comfortable speaking then it's going to be easier for you to um you know talk to women because the thing is it's more so about you just being comfortable speaking because talking to women is just about you being comfortable having conversations you see what i'm saying so that's the type of you know that's the type of thing that's going to make it easier for you to um to interact with women because right now what happens is that when you're talking to girls and you're not comfortable talking to them then it's going to be harder for you to actually flirt. It's going to be harder for you to build sexual tension. It's going to be harder for you to to actually, um, you know, like get them attracted to you. You see what I mean? Because a lot of the attraction they're going to feel for you comes from your confidence and comes from your vibe, comes from your swag, comes from your energy. And if your energy is low or you feel nervous or you're not sure of yourself, they're going to pick up on that and they're not going to want to really deal with you. You see what I'm saying? But but again, it, it comes right. it comes with practice. So the more that you practice, the better you're going to be at doing it. You see what I'm saying? That's it. So right. like so like like real quick, you said that um I sound nervous now. Yeah, cuz like when you first called in, you, you like your voice sounded a little shaky. You know what I'm saying? Like you you sounded yeah, like yeah. you know what I mean? So, so, See, the, so uh, uh, like, thing is, like, uh, like, I've been studying, like, psychology a little bit, and then I was, like, I, I like, figured out that, um, like, how you grew up, mm-hmm. you know, like, the whole social conditioning has a huge uh, effect on, on your life, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Right. And, like, um, I, like, grew up with the stutter a little bit, mm-hmm. and, um... Like, I also kind of had, like, a toxic family, so, like, that, like, like those mindsets, mm. I'm guessing, you know, like, when you grew up with those to- toxic mindsets, I think it, like, weighs on you. Right. So, so, uh, like, with that, um, like, how do you get, like, get past that? Like, get past mm. the negative in your family or, like, the stuttering and, uh, you know, just these, like, psychological things. Right. Well, well the it, thing, it, the it, thing it, is... You know. <laughs> Yeah, the thing is too is that you know, a lot of those things you know it's it because if you you know if you let's say you're 20 years old, 25 years old, that's all those years of you having those things ingrained in you. You feel what I'm saying? But see, the thing is, is that again, it, it's coming. It's it comes from you sort of reprogramming your mind and and doing so much things that you end up sort of transforming yourself into, you know, the the type of guy you want to be. So it's not something that's going to happen overnight. See, that's the problem is that a lot of guys, like, they're looking for the quick fix. They're looking for the quick answers or whatever. But the, thing, the, the truth is, is that what happens is the way that you're going to actually get better and improve is that there's it's the little steps you take that's going to, uh, at, you know, at some point, get you from point A to point B. Because the thing is, is that the more you practice, so let's say if you go out and... You start talking to girls or whatever, and you're stuttering or you're nervous and everything, or you have those thought, thoughts in your head, right? Um, mm-hmm. That's going to be there even while you're doing it, even while you're practicing. But the more that you practice, 
the more that you're going to actually have women that's going to, you know, talk to you more, have more conversations with you, who's going to stop and interact with you. Then once you start to see it happening for you, you know, in real time, then that's going to actually make you see the situation differently. So now that you see the situation differently, like, oh shit, I can act, you know, when I'm talking to this, when I talked to this girl, she was actually being receptive to me. So now you know that girls are going to be receptive to you. So then when you actually go out and talk to more women, you already have the reference experience to know that girls are going to be receptive to you because it happened before, but it only happened because you went out and practiced. So it was the combination of you practicing uh, and then getting the reference experience, the reference experience makes you more motivated to talk more. The more motivated you are to talk more, you get more reference experience. And then that creates the strength in your conversation and your, uh, you know, you spit in that game. All the, the things that you have in your head, all those little things that you got in your head, a lot of it will dissipate the more that you do it. Because the more that you do it, it's going to be contrary to what you have in your head. So, you know, like a lot of times guys say, um, you, you know, oh, it's all about looks. And if you don't look good, blah, 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 blah girls are going to watch you. So now let's say if you're a guy who isn't like, you know, a model looking type of dude, or you might even, he might even think he's not the best looking guy. If he starts going out there and talking to women and then he sees that a girl's receptive to him or that a lot of girls start to be receptive to him, what's going to happen is, is that his thought of thinking that, oh, I have to be the best looking guy is going to dissipate because the reality is going to crush his image of what he thought was really supposed to happen. You see what I mean? So this is why I'm saying that the more you go out there, the more you're actually going to see the results. But you actually got to go out there and you got to continuously do it even while it's not going the way you want it to go at the moment. This is why I said it doesn't happen overnight. Because there's going to be a, a long period of time where you're going to go out there and you're still going to be nervous or you're still going to stutter. You're still going to, you know, feel a certain way. But you got to push through that to keep going so that at, at certain points you're going to start to see your strong points and that's when you're going to get it. You see what I mean? So it's a lot more of you putting it into practice because the putting it into practice creates that, the, the, you know, the guy that knows how to really make it happen. You see what I mean? Oh, okay, I see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, because, like, I've been doing this, like, um, uh, like I started last week, mm-hmm. and then I, like, started over because, like, I, I just couldn't uh, uh, approach. Mm-hmm. Then, like, I'm, like, getting set up, but mm-hmm. but you're saying you have to continuously practice. Right, because right. how, how long have you been, right. how long have you been going out there talking to chicks? Um, about a week and a half. So you so it, so it's only been a week and a half, um, like that like that you've really been doing it, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. So that's um, right. So that's what I'm saying. Like, you have to you know, go on in the in environments with like women and everything, and like mm-hmm. and like trying to uh, approach. Right, and 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 this is what I'm saying. What I'm saying is is that you gotta make it a continuous thing. You see what I mean? Like you gotta go out for months and do this shit. You feel what I'm saying? And on top of that, what I would say is this. It's not even necessarily about your stutter because the stuttering really isn't the problem. The problem really is the your your energy and your confidence because you I, I know a dude who, who who stutters a lot, but his his he's confident though when he talks. So the confidence yeah. is the thing that makes the chicks gravitate to you. You see what I mean? It's that energy. Yeah. It's the thing that, you know, it's like when you're when you're you know, when someone is speaking with authority and someone is sure of what they're saying, you want to listen to them. You want to see what they have to say because they're actually um, confident. It's almost to the point where you could literally be talking bullshit, but if you say it confidently, if you say some confident shit, then people will will pay attention. You feel what I'm saying? So it's really about the confidence. Yeah. It's about how you put yourself out there. But but again, that also cont- that also takes practice where. You have to build that confidence within you when you're actually going out there talking, when you're going out there interacting with the women. You see what I'm saying? It's just that vibe. It's that energy that you feel. And the thing is, people are going to treat you um, 
based off of how you treat yourself. So if you look at yourself as that confident guy, that high value guy, the guy that is a cool motherfucker, you got the swag, you got, you know, you're, you're just sure of yourself. You're like, yo, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm fucking cool. You understand? I'm the shit. Then people are going to start treating you that way because it's, you know, they see that you're putting out that energy and that's what they want to gravitate to. You see what I'm saying? Is that's all, that's all it really is. You see what I mean? All right, got it. All yeah, right, man. And then also I have like uh, one other quick question. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been watching like the RSD videos, mm-hmm. and they always, you know, like, uh, um, like uh, a lot of extra shit, mm-hmm. like comfort and all that. And uh, like I've seen one of your videos, and you say like you don't rip. Oh, you breaking up? What you said? Basically, like, I've seen one of your videos mm-hmm. where you said you don't really need rapport, mm-hmm. but, like, isn't rapport, you know, you my rapport? Um, crucial? You talking about rapport? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, right. Like, isn't uh, uh, rapport. rapport crucial, though? Right, well, the thing but is, you can... You, you said in, like, one of your um, videos mm-hmm. that you don't, don't need it. Right. Well, the thing is, you don't necessarily need to build rapport with a chick in order to get a chick. See, rapport is basically when you when you're building rapport, all you're all you're doing is you're trying to find something sort of like in common or something that you guys can mirror or you can mirror with her or she mirrors with you, whatever, to build a connection, right? But the thing is is that you there's certain women that you meet where the rapport is it happens organically. So that's basically what I'm saying is that you can trying to build rapport, right? Is basically you trying sort of, and, and the key word is trying. You trying to create a connection. So it's it's you thinking of what do I need to say and do in order to create the connection. So when I say you don't need to build rapport, what I'm saying is is that when you are a dude who's just confident and you're approaching a girl and you're interacting with her, the rapport is being built organically and naturally based off of you being comfortable in a situation and confident to talk to her about whatever you want to talk to her about or or you know um freaking uh controlling the direction of the situation so for example a, a, a guy building rapport he might go up to, he might talk to a girl and he might say oh so you know uh what do you like to do for fun and then she'll be like oh i like to you know um like uh freaking like climb mountains or some shit you understand and then he might be yeah. he might say oh that's that sounds fun because you know i like to like you know uh go on long walks so you know i know how it feels to you know be active and use your body and blah 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 blah. so he's trying to find things in common you understand what i'm saying with the girl in order to build the rapport you see what i'm saying so when i say you don't necessarily need to build rapport an example of that would be if i'm talking to a girl and I just start going direct and be like, hey, you know, what's what's going on? You know, I was checking you out from across the room. I thought you was cute. You know, what's your name? I'm Lucario. Oh, your name is Jenny. Nice to meet you, Jenny. So listen, like, what, what are you up to later on today? We should, you know, go and, uh, you know, hang out or whatever. You understand? So it's like I'm not even worried about, uh, you know, um, sort of like connecting with her is that I'm sort of. Um, I'm, I'm giving her that energy about who I am to get her attracted to me. You see what I'm saying? So it's, it's sort of like two different things. So building rapport is just trying to find that common thing that you have with the girl to build sort of like this comfortability with you and her. But then what I'm saying you don't need to build rapport is that you're just straight away going at it and then creating that and that that attraction is being created organically because your confidence level is so high and she's attracted to you with that confidence. You see what I'm saying? So building rapport is 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 okay, but I'm saying that you don't necessarily need to try to do it. You understand? Because that that okay. feeling of comfortability that she has with you can come across naturally just by you interacting with her how you want to interact with her. You see what I'm saying? Oh, uh, okay, I see. Right. So that's the only uh, one. Uh, all right, appreciate it. That's what's up. All right, man. Thanks for the call, bro. All right, man. Thank you. Yeah, all right, man. Later. All right, so we got in the chat room. What up, Alfonso? What's going on? What up, Ao? 
He said it's Tinder free. Yeah, I mean, it has a free portion, but you can pay for it to get more swipes and shit. What up, Wavy Boyo? What's going on? So, yeah, so for those who were asking about the How to Have Sex with Two Women a Day audio, um, I sent it to um, Amazon to get it on Audible, too, also. So it should be on there soon, but, they, you know, they, it takes a while for that shit to, uh, to get on there. They got to do their process or whatever. But if you want to get it right now, just go straight to MrLocario.com, and you can get the How to Have Sex with Two Women in a Day audio book. So you can just sit back, relax, and listen He said, do I give also give business advice as part of improving your game? Um, yeah, sometimes, you know, if, if I do like the if you know the one on one uh thirty minute game sessions, yeah, you can you can do that. That's why I tell you guys, you know, make sure you sign up for the thirty minute game sessions so we could, you know, get it popping in there. You feel me? He said, what do you do when a girl says, uh, so all you want for me is sex? You say, well, what else you got for me besides sex? <laughs> like, what else, what else, what else you got for me? What else are you going to do for me? You're like, hell yeah, I just want you for sex. Turn around. <laughs> Let's make it happen. Or what you really need to do, say, girl, stop playing. What you, what you talking about? And then just change the fucking subject. You feel me? What's, what's popping? Who's this? Good with you. This is Infinite Ism. What up, bro? What's going on? I'm doing well, brother. How you doing? I'm chilling. I'm chilling. What's going on with you? Nah, man. Hey, I want to thank you for uh, a video you posted about like a week and a half ago. Mm. Where you said to not call women. Mm -hmm. You feel me? <laughs> it was like just strict with the uh, text messages or right, whatever. Right, right. Exactly. 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 Not real shit. Nigga, I wasted so much Mm -hmm. I know. On the phone with bitches, <laughs> thinking like, oh, okay, you know, I'm trying to warm up pussy. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Thinking I'm going to, you know, get to, you know, you know, just build a little rapport mm -hmm. with the female before, you know, because a lot of times you knock a female off of Tinder, you ain't meet them in person, so you like, let me see if she sounds excited, you know, mm -hmm. based off of, because you really can't tell how somebody is off text messages sometimes. Right. But now it's like, now I'm just strictly on that text message. Mm hmm. Right, yeah, because the thing is, you know, with the calling, I tell dudes, like, a lot of times you'll call these shit. Some girls, you know, they'll be like, oh, I want to call you. Can I call you? Can we talk on the phone? All that other shit. And, you know, it's all right. Talk to them for, for a minute or two and then get the fuck off. Because the thing is, again, you don't want to waste any time with women um, you know, before you're really out meeting them and seeing them. So, like, if you meet a chick online, you want to just, you know, uh, as soon as possible, set a time to meet up. If you meet a chick in person, you get her number, just text her, call her or whatever to actually meet up. It's really all about the meetup, but that's all it really is about because if you're doing all the other extra stuff um, by giving her attention, that's a lot of time wasted because you got to understand something. Your attention, this is what I be, I be trying to tell dudes, your attention uh, that you're giving to a woman is like, it's like sunlight, it's like gold, it's like, it's valuable. You understand? Your attention is valuable to women. So you want to make sure that if you're giving her attention, there should be an uh, a, a equal exchange of attention that she's giving you as far as in your favor. So... You calling her and talking to her on the phone, that's not really for you. That's for her. You feel what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? so, so the thing is, what's for you is the actual face-to-face -face interaction to where sex could happen. You see what I mean? So then that's when I'm going to give you attention is when I'm in front of you to try to make sex happen. You see what I mean? Calling on the phone and texting all day or whatever it is and you know spending a lot of time doing that. 
That doesn't do anything but just give her attention while you're not really getting anything in return. Because you don't really care about it. As a guy, you don't care about no fucking attention. You want the actual <laughs> nah. thing. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's crazy. So, basically, you bargain your attention just like these bitches bargain they pussy. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You, you know, know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> you know that. Because exactly. Because you know that's all you pretty much you want from her. Right, And that's right. pretty much what... Because they get a high from attention. Mm-hmm. You know, they get that real... I remember Tariq said in a book, mm-hmm. he said, um, the difference between men and women is like, we'll have sex with pretty much any female and have no sexual, like, not, or no emotional attachment right, right. towards the female, mm-hmm. right? And so that means that, you know, we have more of a, a flexibility in regards to the females we fuck. Mm-hmm. Now, females, he said, they need attention as much as, much as we need a nut. Right, the thing right. is, Females will get attention from any dude, mm-hmm. period. Even mm-hmm. even if they're not attracted to them, even if they ain't trying to fuck with them, they'll, you know. And you might, you as a dude, you might get a false impression like, oh, okay, you know. Mm-hmm. You over here chopping it up and shit like that. And you thinking like, okay, this bitch probably feeling me. But mm-hmm. it's like, nah, you got to get straight to the point. Exactly. Just like you said, like the date, you feel me? Because if you're on the phone... A bitch will be on the phone with you for an hour. Mm. And next thing you know, you you over here trying to say. I remember this one chick. It was hella. It was hella funny. She she hit me up the day of in the morning. Mm. Like we were supposed to link up mm. or whatever, and she hit me up the, the morning of, and we was on the phone for a minute. You feel me? Like I'm like okay, whatever. You know, chopping up with the bitch, and she was kind of bad. So I was like, fuck it. Right. You feel me? I thought <laughs> I, I thought it was. You know, I was thinking at the time it was gonna work. And then, like, 30 minutes before we were supposed to kick it, she hit me up like, oh, you know, um, the babysitter ain't here uh, and shit like that. I'm like, bitch, <laughs> shut your ass up. <laughs> That's exactly. So it's like, yo, you wasted a whole hour talking to the chick. And, you know, this is like, for what? You feel what I'm saying? Because... <sighs> Because I, I remember I even had a story with one of my boys. He did some shit like that. And, and he met a chick on the street. And he he rolled... They were talking for like an hour. They went to the park. They were chilling on a bench talking. So as he was about to leave her, he was like, yo, I got to head out. But, you know, we should get together again and blah, blah, blah. So then this chick's like, oh, I can't. I got a boyfriend. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> so he... So he freaking spent the whole hour with some chick who got a boyfriend. Oh, you see what I mean? Yeah, wasted a whole Ex- hour. Exactly. Damn. So I was just like, dude, you could have just from the jump been like, yo, what's good, blah, 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 blah. And then, you know what I mean? And that would have been it. But I'm like, see, that's what happens. That's what happens. You know what I mean? Nah, yeah, man, you ain't never lied. And the yeah. thing is, it's not like when you over here setting up dates or if you straightforward in regards to trying to fuck because you know these bitches are already out here fucking mm-hmm. and they already been presented you know mm-hmm. with dudes all the time they get approached all the time and mm-hmm. a lot of dudes tend to forget that right so that's why it's very important to be straight to the point because it's like look i know these other niggas is over here approaching you too like hey look mm-hmm. let, let you know let's make something happen and trying to fuck with it. if you choose me you choose me if not keep it pushing right because also too you gotta understand these chicks they're fucking somebody and because, you know, uh-huh. when, when I when I be going out with chicks, right, I always be asking them or, or I be telling them to tell me who else they fucking just just because I, I like I like to know just on some research purposes type of shit, because it's like, dude, all of them be like, oh, yeah, I was messing with this guy. They be honest? Week. Yeah, they be telling me they be talking because, tell- you know, I tell them I'm a dating coach and shit. So they be telling me all the information. You see what I'm saying? And so yeah, I'll be yeah. I'll be out with chicks and you know, a chick like I'll be like, yo, when's the last time you had sex? They be like, Oh, uh this morning. I'm like, Okay, this morning, okay, that's cool. And I'll be like, How many guys are you talking to right now? They're like, Oh, it's usually like three or four. In in you know, sometimes it'll be two, but it's usually between the three and four range. It's usually, you know, at least two niggas they fucking and the other two is on, you know, uh, you know, floating around. You feel what I'm saying? So these chicks got shit going on, you feel what I'm saying? But but us as guys, we we've been we've been like you know fed this illusion that they're just hanging out at home, chilling, waiting for for us to come through. You know what I'm saying? It's like nah, they out here making it happen. So so the thing is, is like I always say, you got to be the dude who is actually the one, um, who's you know, you got to be the one she's fucking. 
If you ain't the one that she's fucking, then you're wasting time. You feel what I'm saying? It's crazy. I think the dude, uh, his phone cut out and shit. Damn, what time is it? It's fucking 2 in the goddamn morning. We got 92 people watching this motherfucker. What's popping with you people? Make sure you guys go and, and sign up for Patreon, man. Go to Patreon backslash Mr. Locario. You feel me? And so you can uh, subscribe to the Patreon. You understand? Because I we I appreciate everybody on the Patreon. That's where you're gonna see you're gonna hear the Bad Boy Show every Sunday. And also, I'm gonna have exclusive Patreon uh, programs on there. You feel me? So you know, make sure you guys join that. So what's going on in the chat room, people? What's going on in the chat room? We got Von D, John Doe, what up? Chris, you said you can't seem to lose your virginity even though you're good looking. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You got to get up on that game, bro. Got to get up on that game, son. And then you will make it happen. You feel me? So, you know. Wavy Boyo, you said any night game tips? Um, basically, if you if you out at night, man, just understand that a lot of these chicks are down to fuck. You understand? So go out there with it with a with a plan. This is what I was talking about, you know, early in the show when we were talking about you know, a positioning yourself to make sex happen. You understand? Like, you gotta go. You gotta be extremely sexual with these women that you're dealing with. You feel what I'm saying? Like, don't go in talking regular shit all night and just being all extremely platonic and friendly. You gotta see as soon as possible how down these chicks are to make to make shit happen. So when you approach these girls, you just you know you go into flirt mode heavy. You approach them, start, you know, you could do like a little small talk real quick and then just go straight into flirt mode. Blue Duck, you said, how do you, how do you simp like Steve Harvey? <laughs> I don't know, man. You said you have a hard time with groups at night and cock blocks. Well, you know, that's the thing you got, you know, at night, if you see, you know, if it's like super large groups of like six or seven girls and it's just you, you know, that's going to be a little bit difficult. Or if there's a whole bunch of dudes around, if you, I would say, don't even fuck with those huge, big ass clubs. Go to something like low key. You understand? Go to one of those like low key dive bars and shit. Yeah, what's going on? Who's this? Yeah. Uh, this is Mr. Lucario. Hello. Why? 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 You, why you gotta call? It's, it's too late in the, in the night to be to be trolling. Why? Gotta, no, I'm not trolling, sir. I'm not trolling. Uh -huh. I want to ask you some points. Uh huh. Go ahead. Um, uh, 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 I'm a virgin. I'm 37 years old, living with my mom. Uh huh. Okay. And 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 what's going on? Let me let me know what's happening. <laughs> I, I need your help. Women can use me for money. <laughs> you said women using you. You ain't got no money. What are you talking about? No, I, I give all my money to my mom. Nigga, why you why are you breathing like that though? You sound you sound you sound you sound kind of moist breathing like that. I don't, I don't like all that breathing. I'm I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> I, I just don't have no confidence in myself. Nigga, what's wrong with you, yo? <laughs> I don't even, I'm just like, yo, I'm, 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 I'm keeping you on here, cause you, 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 you hilarious. But why, why you gotta sound like that though? That's not, that's not, uh, that's not cool. You feel me? That's not cool. Okay, I got, I gotta cut this dude off, cause he, he sound like he jerking off, catching multiple orgasms and shit. I'm like, the fuck are you talking about? Oh, 
my goodness. That's crazy. That's crazy. So what's popping, people? I'm trying to read these messages on my phone and shit. Niggas calling in. Sounding like... <laughs> Sound like one of those gender, gender. <coughs> can't even talk. <coughs> you sound like one of those gender neutral niggas. <laughs> you see, you sound like a <laughs> a cat getting raped. <laughs> my god hilarious <laughs> oh y'all be having me dying up here man <laughs> uh. <laughs> yo somebody need to, somebody need to watch the playback and fucking sample that shit and put it in a rap beat or some shit <laughs> nigga sounded like oh my god that shit is terrible. Oh, man. So what's what's popping with you people, man? <laughs> I got jokes. He say that nigga be going to both bathrooms. Oh, hilarious. That's funny. <laughs> June, what up? <laughs> Yo, what's popping? Who's this? What's up, man? It's Mike. What up, Brooklyn. bro? What's going on? We from? From Brooklyn, man. From Brooklyn. What's popping with you, man? Yeah, man. Uh, like night, night game, bro. That I was asking you about in the chat. Night game been killing me, man. Oh, where? So, what? So, what? What be going on when when you be uh out here at night? What's popping? Man, first of all, I go out and I, I always go out by my. So it's just me and most of the girls I see out at night. It's mm. big group. So I, I go out in places in Brooklyn, but a lot of places in Brooklyn they're empty. So mm. I'm sure I'll go out to the city. <laughs> Wait, hold up. Why, like, Wait, hold up. Why you, why you, why your phone sound like that? Sound like <laughs> uh, what? Your, your your phone sound like you um. Instead in the in the chat room, your, your phone sound like you underwater, like it's like vibrating like crazy. But anyway, we go we gonna make it happen though. But you said you say you be going. You you say you live in Brooklyn. Okay, do you go to the city in Manhattan a lot? Yeah, I go to LES, mm. and people have been telling me to go meatpacking, but I figured meatpacking like the fancy spot, you know, I would like find some bullshit out there. I wouldn't find what I'm really looking for. So what, what are you looking for, though? Like some freaking chick I could pull home and bust down for the night, man. I'm not like jealous yeah, for nothing too fancy. You can find that anywhere, but you, you gotta go. You should go to the meatpacking district. Go to, go, you yeah. You, you in, in so what part of what part of Brooklyn you live in? East New York. Oh damn! <laughs> so you exactly, out. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you, I, I don't even go to East New York. I'm like fuck that shit. But um, <laughs> but but nah, you got you got it, yo. You got I say you got to go to some Manhattan spots, bro. And then and then you are gonna have to. You gonna have to either go to the chick spot or you gonna have to take a. Uh, do, do you drive? I take an Uber. A Uber, yeah. So you could take an Uber back I, I, to the I spot. Drink, so I'm not gonna be driving up there. Right. So so you you gotta yeah go to go to Lower Manhattan. Go to this is a spot called Labane. You ever been to Labane? Uh, I heard of it. It's in meatpacking. Though, yeah, right? it's in meatpacking. Go to Labane, or if you're in Lower Manhattan, like around Delancey, go to uh, Beauty and Essex. You ever been there? Nah. Yeah, Beauty and Essex is tight. Either Beauty and Essex, Labane. You ever been to Pianos? Pianos, nah. See, you you missing out on all the shit. I've been, to, um, I've been to Hotel Chantel. I've been there. Okay. But most of the time when I go to these places in LES, there's mm -hmm. like big groups of girls. So if I'm talking to one girl, mm -hmm. things will be getting like her friend will see that I'm hitting it off for her about to get her. Right. Then she'll come and be like, oh, come play pool with us. Or, right, you right. Know, snatch her away. Like, and, she has a boyfriend. She can't talk. And do you, do you go by yourself? Yeah, I'm always by myself, man. So, like, right. I don't want to get it to a problem where, like, I'm going to have to, like, curse the cock block out. 
Right. And, you know, they kicked me out the spot, so I'm just like, I, you know, sometimes I just stump, like, well, how do I handle this situation? Right. Well, the thing is, the thing is, if you if you out by yourself, right, you got to have to go to, you're going to have to go to more lower key spots. Because I know Hotel Chantel, the one you're talking about, that shit is just a, a fucking sweat box. Usually it's yeah. mad, it's mad fucking hot. Is 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 uh, is crowded as hell. So you don't want to go to the to the places that's too crowded. There's a place called Pianos that's on a, in uh, the Lower East Side that you could check out where it's a little bit more laid back. To where like I even like let me show you. Wait, I'm gonna I'm gonna show I'm gonna show the people on the screen maybe like a picture of um. Of when I was in pianos and shit. Let me go on my Instagram real quick so I can find some some pictures of me in pianos and shit. But um, did so you like, um, did you ever check out Max Fish? Max Fish? I don't know what that is. What's that? Yeah. Oh, it's okay. It's like right down from Hotel Chantel. It's like a little like urban spot. Okay, I think I know what you're talking about. But yeah, like you got to go to more low key low key spots because the low key spots it's easier to pull there because. It's not too too big of a thing. Cause like, look, this is this is me in fucking pianos. You know what I'm saying? Chilling. You know what I mean? It's like it's just you know, it's just a a, a cooler um, environment in pianos and that. You know what I'm saying? And the thing is, is that it's it's whenever you go to more of the low key spots, don't go to the, like the hotel chantels where it's it's fucking a million people. You squished. You can't. You know those sweat box type of joints. Forget all of that shit. You got to go to places where, uh, go to Labane, because Labane is in the meatpacking district, and it's like a rooftop shit, it's mad space, it's a lot, it's easier to talk to chicks, you know, it's, it, chicks will go there in, in groups of like two and all that other shit, so it's easier to pull chicks there, you see what I'm saying? So, the thing is, is that you, you got to make sure that you're in those places where it's the opposite of the huge, big ass fucking heavy dance clubs, like, don't even bother with a lot of those stuff, joints. But a lot of there's a lot of like low key ones in Lower East Side or in the Meatpacking where it's like a bar type of environment. If if you see anything where you gotta stand on a line to get in, don't go to any of those shits. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. you know what I mean? The only exception I would say is pianos because pianos, even though there might be a line sometimes, is still a little bit more laid back. But generally, if you see a line to go anywhere. Don't go into any of those just Go into joints where there's no line. You go up in there. You see the girls in groups of no more than three. You understand what I'm saying? Two is even better because it's just her and her friend. And then usually, like, her friend will go home or whatever. And then you could take the other chick, you know, whatever. And if there is a cock blocker, the, you know, usually the way that you handle cock blockers um, is different. Like, if it's a girl cock blocker, you understand what I'm saying? You know, usually just with, with, with that girl... What you say to her is like you, you you pull her to the side or not even pull her to the side, but you say to her be like, hey, listen, you know, I'm just trying, I'm I'm talking to your friend real quick. You're gonna get her back in two minutes. I promise. I'll bring her to you. You see what I'm saying? And then you sort of like pull her friend away from her, and then you start talking to her friend and be like, listen, um, you know, take my number down. I'll holler at you later. Because a lot of times, unfortunately, since you have that cock blocker there and the girl's not, you know, she might not leave her friend if the friend is on some cock block shit. There's really nothing you could do at that point. You feel what I'm saying? Or if it's a dude cock blocker, right? What I always say is that if you see a chick and, you know, let's say it's two girls and a dude, you always approach and acknowledge the dude first and, you know, talk to him a little bit and start talking to the girls, figure out who he's with, if one of these girls is his girlfriend or not, whatever, whatever. And then you go in because usually once you sort of friend the dude and he's, you know, he sees that you're cool, a lot of times they won't cock block a lot of times, you understand? But if you're just sort of going in cold and you do that and then they see it because he could be one of those guys in a friend zone and he's all jealous that you're talking to the girl that he likes. You feel what I'm saying? And he's just going to like block it. But the thing is, is that if you're just chilling and you're talking to him first, get, you know, get him just like, you know, sort of like almost on your side to a certain extent and you talking to all of them and then you just slide your car to the other girl or whatever, then you can do that. But if you're trying to really pull a girl that night, you understand what I'm saying? You got to look for the ones that's just in groups of two, like it's her and one other girl and three the most, because sometimes if it's three, if you talk to one of them, the other two can occupy the, each other, you feel what I'm saying? And then, you know, depending on how you maneuver that night, you could probably pull her 
if her the other two friends aren't too much of a cock block. You see what I mean? But um, for you, it, it, it'll probably be easier for you too if you actually have some wingman, if you have one other dude with you at some points. But I know sometimes it's not dude, feasible. I, you see what I mean? Yeah, the, yeah. I was just going to say, like the dudes I know, like they get really drunk. Mm-hmm. You tell them to approach a girl and they like, they, they, they make an excuse to talking about they're trying to find something to break the ice. Right. They're ready to fight dudes. They're ready to fight and like stab niggas, but they're not ready to talk to no girls, you know? <laughs> That's why I usually just go, go by myself, bro. Uh, oh, man. It's, it's crazy. But, yeah, but it's, you know, the thing is, you know, it's it's one of those things where, you know, it's a numbers game. And it's it, it, the more skilled you are at the social interactions and being able to, um, you know, really. It's really just about isolating the girl you're trying to talk to. You feel what I'm saying? Because if you if you are able to isolate her to the point where she feel some sort of like attraction and attachment to you then it's easier to pull her from her friends to make something happen you see what i mean but it's it's usually one of those things where she you know it's it's easier if you have a a a wingman or it's um you know it's easier if it's you know she's just with one other girl you see what i'm saying because a lot of times when she's just with that one other girl what you could do is let's say it's getting toward the end of the night or whatever and it's, it's, you know, this girl you're trying to talk to and she has her friend and her friend might be like, oh, let's just, let's go, blah, blah, blah. But you can tell the girl wants to go home with you. You can be like, yo, um, I'm a, you know, let's put your friend in the cab. You know what I'm saying? So you put the cop blocker in the cab, get her ass in a cab. You close the cab door, tell them to get the fuck on with her. And then you go with the other chick. You see what I'm saying? And then that's all, that's how you do it. You know what I mean? So, you know, that's how you got to get it going. And another, and another, like, bro, like, when you're out by yourself mm-hmm. and you're, like, going venue hopping, how do you stay and stay if you're by yourself? You know, like, how do you stay in a zone that you, you want to talk to people? Because sometimes mm-hmm. I find myself, like, slipping out of it, like, oh, I don't want to talk to nobody. You motherfuckers look lame. Mm-hmm. I don't really feel like talking to nobody right now. Mm-hmm. Well, that's, that's the thing is that you, you, you have to, um, like, you have to play off of the positive interactions you have with certain women. So there's going to be certain women who you talk to, they're going to be on some bullshit, they might be ignoring you, they might be, you know, just be on some nonsense, but there's going to be girls who are going to be receptive to you. So if you play off of that, you say, okay, well, you know, I got this girl's number, and but then, you know, she went with her friends or whatever, and it's cool, and then you just go and you talk to another girl, but it has to be, and this is a trick, it has to be where you're doing it um, ext- like uh, consistently. It has to be something that's you, you're doing almost like on a rapid pace. So like you talk to one girl, let's say you get her number, and then literally two minutes later or a minute later, you're right on the next girl. You see what I'm saying? And then you're right on the next girl. You're right on the next girl. Because when you get into that flow, it gets you into that state of of actually being, um, you know, <laughs> like in that motivational, in that motivated type of state to to keep it going. The, the problem is, is that guys, they go, you go out and you'll talk to one girl and it, you know, it'll go cool or whatever. You might get a number, you might even make out with her, whatever, whatever like that. But it doesn't really go anywhere as far as the end of the night. And then you end up waiting another half an hour before you talk to the next girl. You see what I mean? And all that waiting in between time, it uh, dissipates your motivation. You see what I'm saying? And then so you, so it's like you got to start over to get back into that state. You see what I mean? Got you, man. Yeah, man. So I mean, you know, if and, and you and you in you in New York, so I might I might run into you at some point. You know, what I'm saying if you see me in the street, yeah, just, man, I stayed downtown Brooklyn, bro. If you want me right. to get you a drink, definitely, man. We'll yeah, man. I'll let me. Time, yeah, man. hit me up. Hit me up through the email. Let me know, and I'll, I'll let you know when I'm like out. You feel what I'm saying? Alright, no problem. Bro. All right, bro. All Thanks. Right, man. Peace. Later. Yeah, man. So what's going on, people? You got Adam C in the chat room. Crazy Ralph, what's going on? Shad Rizzle, what's popping? JJ Reddick, my dude, the Alpha Male, still up in the piece. Let me see what's going on. Yo, what's popping? Who's this? Chris. What up? What's your name? Chris. Prince? 
No, Chris, Chris. Chris, oh, Chris, what's going on? Where you from? Queens. Queens, what's popping with you, though? What's going on with you? No, I'm just calling because uh, I'm having trouble in college get picking up any girls at all. You say you're having trouble picking up any women? Yeah, in college, because, like, like I see some girls that, that I like, but, like, I go up sometimes and and and, and I they don't actually like me back. Wait, and so and so, so what happens? Like, what are you what are you saying? How do they not? How do you? How do they not like you back? What are you doing? What like, are you like 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 sometimes like I like I work out a lot, so I'm like six three, two hundred pounds of muscle, and I like sometimes I wear like a tank top to college. Mm -hmm. Like I'm I'm really ripped, so mm -hmm. like they're looking at my body and stuff, but then I go up to them and talk, and they're like, oh no, I have a boyfriend. Mm -hmm. And how many? And then I don't understand. Well. <laughs> Well, well, how? Well, the thing is, is that how many women are you talking to, though? Oh no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not really talking to any. I'm just doing a online tender now. I'm just trying to. So you're not talking. You're not approaching any women like in person in public. Oh no! Sometimes, like if I see a girl that looks at me. Mm hmm. Well, that's the thing. You have should, to. Should I wait for that? No, no, this is the thing. You have to do everything. So meaning, you got to talk to girls in public. You got to. Talk to girls when you're at your college parties. You got to talk to girls on Tinder, OkCupid. Okay you got to exhaust all options, and you have to make it consistent. So the thing is, like, how many how many girls a day would you say that you would talk to, or that you've been talking to? Like to one or two. See, that's I don't really talk to that much. You got to talk to more, bro. You gotta, you got to talk to like 25 <laughs> chicks a day if you can. You feel what I'm saying? But I'm shy. Come on, dude. You ain't shy. Come on, son. What do you mean you shy? Like what? What do you? What are you shy about? What makes you shy? Oh no, because I'm like, like I get nervous sometimes. Right. Well, that's that's why you got to start doing it. You got to start talking to more <laughs> women so you the sort of nervousness will go away. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> that's what you got to do. See, your problem is your problem is is that you're not you're not putting in any work and you're not practicing. As soon as you start putting in work and practicing, that's when you're gonna get results. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. That's all you got to do. But but the thing is, I have no money or, or no car. And so, and where you from? Where 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 you from? Hollis. You from you so from you say you from Hollis Queens? Yes. Nigga, you don't need no car in New York, man. What you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, bro. Stop. <laughs> you don't need no car. What are you? What are you and how old are you? Eighteen. You ate, oh, so you a young dude. Come on, dog. Like, yeah. <laughs> Look, man, you ain't got to worry about no car and, and having a whole bunch of money. <laughs> you got to worry about your, your mouthpiece, bro. <laughs> That's all you got to worry about. You got to worry about talking to girls and, and, and practicing talking. Stop being scared and shy and just do it. See, most of it is really you doing it. Once you start doing it more... You're going to get better at it, and then you're going to start getting more girls. You feel what I'm saying? This is why I tell you guys, watch the videos. Make sure you get the books. Go to how to go to MissLocario.com. Get How to Have Sex with Two Women a Day because it teaches you all the stuff you need to know to get your mouthpiece right and to make shit pop. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, man. But that's all you got to do. Just but keep... what should I say when I, when I, when I first uh, talk to a girl, like when I like, look at her? Well, you could, this is what you would do. This is what you usually do. Since you're beginning... Talk, yeah. do indirect approaches that's usually easier for guys beginning so what that means is you talk about something in the actual situation so what that mm -hmm. means is is like let's say let's say if you see a girl and she's like in your college and she's carrying some book and then you say to her yo you know what book is that you got that you're reading you understand and she'd be like oh it's my chemistry book and i'm like oh okay so cool you what, what chemistry what chemistry class you taking so you just talk about things in a situation you see what i'm saying mm -hmm. and that's all you do and then you start conversations like that and then you keep it going you keep it moving and that's how you that's how you you keep the conversation going then when you get more advanced you know or when you get more practice in it then you start to learn how to turn those conversations into you know you closing a deal getting her number giving her your number and setting up dates and all this other stuff you understand what i'm saying but this is why Man. you gotta you gotta practice and also watch the videos read the books and then all those things are gonna start helping you out that's why we got that's why i got the book here the book 
is the thing that teaches you exactly what to do. You just read it and follow the instructions and then do it. That's it. You feel what I'm saying? Well, should I wait for a, a woman to give you eye contact to go up? Is that like? No, 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 no. Don't wait for no eye contact. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> do not yeah. wait. Do not wait for these. I no, don't because see that's what dudes mistake. They they're waiting for the eye contact, and a lot of times girls aren't going to give you eye contact as much as you want. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so. You need to just go up and approach, period. Don't worry about the eye contact. Go and approach the chick and start talking. Now, what you got to do is you got to be prepared for women rejecting you because you're going to get rejections. Like, there's no way around it. There's going to be girls that's going to reject you, girls that's going to ignore you, girls who are not going to want to talk to you, and you got to be prepared for that shit, meaning you can't be scared of that. Or don't let that mm-hmm. d- don't let that uh, deter you or make you, um, you know want to give up you see what i'm saying yeah yeah man but yeah just practice but, and you should be uh you should be fine man but you know like when should i do it like after class like like any time in college yeah like if you in the hallways in between classes um you know after class if you join some groups join some join some you know some groups in college to meet some chicks um you know use your social circle you got friends in college and all that right yeah yeah so Talk to your friends, see if they know some other girls, know, you know, some, if you know some girls around the school, talk to them, talk to their friends, all of that. Use every situation that you got to, to get with the chicks. You see what I'm saying? But wait, can, can I just go up to a girl and tell her I'm looking for friends with benefits? Is that, is that a right to do? Yeah. If you want to, if you are comfortable talking to her and saying that, hell yeah. But you, but like, the thing, like that's the first thing you say? No, 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 right? no, 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 no. This is what I'm saying. It's just like it's just like any other conversation, right? When you when you if you're at a party, right, and you meet somebody, you might go up to the person and say, "Hey, what's up? How you doing? How's your night going? Uh, how'd you hear about this party? Or you know, where you from? Like just small talk. So you're gonna have small talk with chicks. You feel what I'm saying? So you meet uh-huh. a chick, you be like, "Hey, what's going on? What's your name? Oh, Stacy. Cool. So you know, what what classes are you taking, Stacy? Oh, you taking um." You know, uh, physics. Okay, that's cool. You know, when, when's your when's your next class? Blah blah blah. So you have a small talk. Mm-hmm. You understand? And then then you just f- flow into it and say, listen, you know, I got I got to get to class, but you know, we should exchange numbers and and get together and hook up sometime. You see what I mean? And that's it. And that's mm-hmm. and then she'll either be like, yeah or no. You know what I'm saying? And that's all you got to do. Her, she has a boyfriend too, right? You don't really you don't really need to ask her if she has a boyfriend. Usually, she'll tell you. You know what I'm saying? But the thing yeah. is, you don't want to really ask her if she has a boyfriend because um, you don't want to give women any room to give you excuses because she might not have a boyfriend. And this is the funny part. She might not have a boyfriend. And she'll tell you she has a boyfriend because you asked her if she has a boyfriend. So it gives her an excuse yeah. to you know, say she has a boyfriend even though she doesn't. Sometimes by you saying to a girl, hey, take my number or give me your number, she'll just follow your instructions and give it to you. And then now you're setting yourself on the path to really get with her. So a lot of times you got to watch what you say to girls because sometimes if you say certain things, it's going to lead them to say certain things back to you. So if you say, hey, do you have a boyfriend? You're going to get them in the mode of talking about boyfriends, even if or they even if they have one or don't. You know what I mean? And they'll sometimes lie to say that just because you brought it up. So it's a lot of different things you got to you know, definitely learn, you understand, when it comes to the game. But mm-hmm. look, all you got this, this is what I'm telling you. What you should do <laughs> is um, go to MrLocario.com, go to my site, and I have, yeah. a, I have a program. It costs $7, okay? And it's, okay? and it's called Master Approaching Women in 30 Days or Less. Start with that. Okay. Start learning that, and that's going to teach mm-hmm. you how to really go and approach girls and talk to them step by steps type of stuff. So it's an audio program. All you do is listen mm-hmm. to it, follow the instructions, and then you you can make it happen. You feel what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah man. Alright, so I'm a, I got a I got a I got a few more okay. calls. So I'm a, I'm okay. a, have to I'll let you later. Alright man. Okay, All right. All right. bye. Alright, peace bro. Alright, who else we got on here? Yo, what's going on? Who's this? What's going on, Mr. Lucario? This is Aaron. It's popping with you. Where you from? I'm uh, from Kansas City. All right. What's going on with you, bro? Oh, uh, man. I'm, I'm having a heat and succeed moment, brother. <laughs> 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 so, 
what's going what's going on, dog? Man, I've been on like four dates, right? Mm. And like, you know what I mean? You know, like a, a chick ghost on you, like she don't want to fuck with you or whatever. Mm. So that happened four times in a row. So four, what? Four different girls or the same girl? Four different girls. Mm -hmm. So like, I know you say like rejection is part of the game, like mm -hmm. uh, as far as whenever you're approaching, mm -hmm. but. Do you feel like it's kind of the same as like four in a row, kind of mm. too much for the date? Like when y'all y'all move to the dating process, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So you said all four of the girls um, flaked. No, nah, not nah, like we actually went on the dates, mm. but like after that, they wasn't really fucking with me. So you went on you went on four first dates, and all four of them didn't holler back. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, it could be something you're doing on the dates, though. That's making them not holler back. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. you know, like, what 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 did you do on these dates? Like, what did you where did you go? Like, what what was some of the stuff that was going on? Uh, well, usually I take them to like a place. It's a place called Hula Hands. Mm. And uh, you know, we'll sit down, we'll have drinks, mm. and you know, I try, you know, I, I follow your advice or whatever. Mm. Like, mm. I'll sit next to them. Mm. You know, I, I may, like, kind of try to touch them or, you know what I mean, kiss them or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Flirt with them and all that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, three, well, I would say three of the dates, like, you know, I it, the chemistry seemed cool. Mm -hmm. You know, I always, I just follow your advice, basically give them compliments, mm -hmm. you know, try to touch them, all that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. So three of the dates, you know what I'm saying, it just kind of ended at the date. Like, they were like, hey, you know what I'm saying, X, Y, Z. And we moved on. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the dates, uh, you know, after the date, you know, the girl was like, so, like, do you want to come to my place? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, cool. I'm like, cool. You know what I'm saying? She invited me to the spot. So yeah. I'm like, okay, this might be a go. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I go to her spot. You know, we chilling. And, uh, you know, I try to, uh, I grab her on her thigh. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I go to, like, try to kiss her on her neck or whatever. And she was like, you know, kind of, like, hesitant, like, you know, like, I don't know about this. Like, I don't want you to be, like, all on me or whatever. Mm. So nothing really came of that either. Right, right. And see, that that's the, <laughs> that's the thing, too, is that some of these chicks that you deal with, like, the more women you deal with, the more flakes and bullshit that you're going to deal with. Is that, and again, that's just part of the game. So sometimes you're going to get with four chicks and they're going to flake or, or, or there or, or things aren't going to happen, you know, where you're going to get a second date or whatever it is. That's why you always got to continuously keep getting more women into the fold. So you, so those four chicks, you charge them to the game. Then the next chick or the next chick after that would be the chicks that could be ended up, you know, the girls that's going to actually want to make shit go down with you. You see what I mean? But what I what I would say is this is that because see a lot of times it's hard for me to assess because I don't exactly know what happened on a date or I wasn't there because there might be something that you could be doing that could be causing the situation to sort of go left. You see what I mean? Because there's always uh, certain little details within the situation that 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 sort of throw things off. You see what I mean? So a lot of times, like, you might be flirting with a girl, but but what happens is that, like, I was talking to the other guy um, earlier, I was saying that the way that you got to know how to flow with the conversation and know how to sort of read the girl, see, you know, her body language, see how she's responding to you. So, like, when you were saying you were touching the girls, what was happening? Were they being responsive to you touching or were they, like, falling back? Like, what were they doing? Okay, uh... Actually, I take that back. Two of the girls I went, I ended up back at their spot. Mm. So you went to you two, went to two girls. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> two of the four I ended up back at their spot. Mm. So okay, now the first girl that I went back to her spot, mm. uh, you know, I tried to like kind of, you know, what I'm saying, grab her thigh or whatever, try mm. to like kiss on her, mm. like try to, you know, what I'm saying. And they was kind of like, and she was just like kind of like closed up, like you know, what I mean, she let me like feel on her titties or whatever. Mm. But after that, she was like, hey, what are you doing? Like, you know what I'm saying? Let's let's just watch the movie. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So that was the first one. Right. And then the second one, 
I went over to her spot, I grabbed her on her thigh, I tried to, like, kiss her on her neck, and mm. she was like, oh, no, like, I don't really like you, like, touching and kissing on me, or whatever. Mm. And so I'm like, okay, I waited for a minute, like, I watched a movie or whatever for a little bit, mm. and then I tried to kind of go back in, you mm. know what I'm saying, and then it was pretty much the same story. Right, and so they, so they was, so you was at the crib, and they both fronting, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they ain't trying to do nothing. Right, right, and 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 that that happens, you know, a, a lot of times too. They call it, they say it in the chat room is is, is LMR, They call it last minute resistance. So like okay. sometimes you be in a situation and the chick, she's pulling back. Because usually when I go to you know if I go to a chick's house or whatever, um, what I usually do is I sort of like you know fall like I'll kiss them a little bit or whatever, but I fall back and then and then see if they're going to hop on it but it was what was good was that you actually um was trying trying it out then you fell back a little bit and then you tried again you feel what i'm saying and then you you know she she still wasn't down for it but that's sort of like how you do it but what i would say with a lot of these chicks too because the fact that you went uh to both of their uh houses or whatever and if a chick is acting like that where she don't want to do something what you really want to do is you want to basically like just bounce truthfully you see what i'm saying so like let's say you're trying to do something and she's like oh no i'm not trying to do that blah 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 and then you'd be like okay well listen um i'm gonna go but if you you know if you want to you know actually do something just holler at me and we could do something later on you feel what i'm saying because the thing is is that you you don't want to because the thing is if you if you're there and you're staying there too long without anything happening or or you know her you know, or her not sort of cooperating with that situation. You don't want to be there too long or to be sort of like complying with that situation because now what you're saying to her uh, without saying too many words is that what she's doing is okay. You see what I'm saying? Or what you're, okay. you're, you're okay with this situation being the way it is. You feel what I mean? But the thing is, you don't, you're not going to sit there. You don't, you don't need to like, Call her out on it and be like, "Yo, why didn't we, why are we not having sex?" And what the fuck and blah blah. You don't want to have that energy. You just want to be like, "Hey, look, well, I'm a, I'm a go. So you know, if you want to get down, uh, you got my number. Let me know. You feel what I'm saying? Or I'll you know, let's yeah. let's get together next week and try this again or something. You see what I mean? When you're when you're ready to make it happen. You see what I mean? And okay. so yeah, right. So you don't you you want to make sure that it's it's that type of energy. But just overall. The thing is, is that when you're talking to these girls, it's always, it's always should be a rotation of you, um, you know, talking to this girl, getting another girl, talking to that girl, getting another girl to replace her, talking to this, you know what I'm saying? Like all just at all times, because you're going to have those times where you're going to have those chicks who, um, you go out with with them once and then they never hit you up again. And a lot of times too, it's not even necessarily something you can control because uh like for example there was this one girl I was messing with and we went out everything seemed cool or whatever and then I found out that she got back with her ex so you know this shit ain't go down again but it's not anything that was wrong with the situation as far as me and her was concerned it was just that she got back with her ex you see what I'm saying like it is what it is so a lot of times you just have to charge them to the game when they're not really sort of flowing with your with what you're trying to do in that in in you know the way you're trying to do it, you see what I mean? But you just gotta yeah. keep just keep that shit pushing. Like don't even worry about none of that because the fact that you was already uh, able to get them to your, to you know to go back to their crib, you feel what I'm saying? Means that you were sort of doing something right in the in the first place to get to that point. You see what I mean? But okay. but just when you got to that point. They was fronting or whatever it was, which made them not want to continue to do shit. And at that point, you have to be like, okay, well, look, I'm about to bounce. I'll holler at you later, whatever, whatever. Because at the end of the day, what you want to do is, and anytime you're in those situations, you want to create a situation to where if they have to sort of know that dealing with you or being in that situation means sex needs to happen. And if it's not going to happen, I'm not going to be with you in the situation. You see what I'm saying? So this is what you're sort of saying with, the, with with so many words. You see what I mean? And then you gotta just keep that shit pushing. You know what I mean? Mm, okay. Yeah, yeah, man. 
Yeah, I can feel that. Yeah, just sometimes it get a little discouraging, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like that many in a row, I'm like, hold on, like mate, like you're saying, like mm-hmm. is it something I am doing wrong, you know what I mean? Right, and and that's the thing. The thing is too is that you know it's it's gonna be times where shit like that happens. You know, there's times where I remember there was times where I've had, uh, you know. Like two chicks I was supposed to see in one day and both of them flaked. You feel what I'm saying? So it is what it is. It's just, you know, it's just part of the game. It's part of the the situation of dealing with women. You feel what I'm saying? Because they're yeah. they're they're so all over the place with the, the shit that they're doing. This is why you can't be reactive to what they're doing. Because what they're doing is just based off of a whole bunch of their emotions and how they feel at the moment and there's really a lot of times no rhyme and reason to why they're going to do what they're going to do anyway because sometimes they're just all over the place sometimes it's because they're just you know their feelings change about you sometimes it's because they're go you know they're they're in the situation with you and they're they like you so much that they're thinking oh i don't want to fuck him now because then he's not going to take me seriously they're thinking that type of vibe you see what i'm saying it's all these fucking different things that can stop the shit from going down but the thing is you don't get yourself discouraged over it because you still need, you still need to keep your energy up for when you talk to other girls because then that energy that you're keeping up is the thing that's going to attract more girls to you so that you can actually deal with the girls who are going to cooperate you see what i mean so you know yeah. it's just the game where you're going to have to deal with some of that bullshit here and there you see what i'm saying yeah. So yeah. yeah, I feel that. Yeah, man. So that's how. Yeah, okay. that's how that goes, man. You feel me? Uh, yeah, I feel that. Yeah, man. Okay. And I was wondering. I know you like you were saying. You know, like uh, women should women should be submissive. Mm-hmm. And you know, uh, so basically, if you kind of give a woman instructions or whatever, mm-hmm. right? She's kind of supposed to kind of yield to those instructions. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. Um, and I and uh, I'll use a small example, like with mm-hmm. you, like. I remember seeing a video with you. Mm. Um, you may like ask your girl, like, "Hey, could you get me a glass of water?" Mm. And she's gonna go gra- grab that glass of water, right? Right. So my question to you is, okay, let's say, what if you ask your girl, like, "Hey, grab me a glass of water," mm. but her reply is, "You don't be getting me glasses of water." You mm. know what I'm saying? Like, you know how, like, like if a woman, like, mm. you may try to do the dominant submissive thing mm. you know try to give her an instruction mm. but like her reply is more like kind of like a tit for tat thing like right well then like, that, mean, that yeah. means that she's not really um submissive like that you see what I'm saying because okay. the girl you're dealing with she's supposed to want to do that for you you see what I'm saying it's not something that she's doing because like it, it, it's never a feeling where she's doing it because she feels she has to. It's she's doing it because she wants to. You feel what I'm saying? And so that's the difference. So if a girl's ever like, "Oh well, how come you ain't do this?" or "Why don't you do this for me?" It, it's that's just her being combative. You understand? And that's not her uh, having a submissive nature. Because a chick who has that submissive okay. nature, she's she's never going to to say that or do that. You see what I'm saying? And so that's, that's just you dealing with a woman who's not submissive. That's you dealing with a woman who's not um, gonna, who's not really cooperating. You feel what I'm saying? Because the thing is, th- this times where, like, I would be with a chick in in just in the bed. We just in the bed chilling or whatever. We probably just finished fucking or whatever it is. And I'll be like, yo, I'm going to go up and I'll be like, I'll be back. I'm going to go get some water. And she'll be like, no, 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 don't worry, I'll get it for you, I'll get it for you, you know what I'm saying? And she she won't let me get up to get it. Like, she wants to get it for me. You know what I'm saying? There's been times where, okay. like, I'm, like, leaving the house or whatever, and, you know, my girl is like, oh, did you eat anything? Can I make you something real quick? Like, I'll, I'll be, I'll, I can make it really fast in, like, five minutes. Like, she's, she's begging me to stay so she can make me some food. You feel what I'm saying? So, there's a difference between the women that you're dealing with who are going to be on some some submissive stuff and the girls who aren't because you know what i'm saying like there's there's no like gray area in this you understand what i'm saying it's either they're submissive or they're not you know what i'm saying and if they're not uh if they don't have the submissive nature then it's like well it, you that chick ain't on some on ain't on some submissive submissive stuff you know what i'm saying so you know yeah that's all that really is you know what i mean Okay, and is it, 
And I was also wondering, like, mm-hmm. is there anything that needs to kind of be sub- reciprocated mm-hmm. to get the submissiveness? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. is there something that I'm supposed to do that's supposed to, like, make her be submissive? You know what I'm saying? Or, like, nah, and that's the yeah, thing. Whatever. <laughs> nah, that's the thing. It's like, okay, it's like this. Do you, do you, does a girl need to do anything for you to want to holler at her? You understand what I'm saying? Except for be cute or or just be how she is. You know what I'm saying? Like you're you're inspired to holler at her because you're a man who's inspired to go up to a woman and approach and talk to her and get her. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. the same thing happens for a woman is that you don't necessarily need to do anything for her to actually want to be submissive or to have that sum- or to display that submissive nature that she already has within her. It's kind of like saying, you know, uh, does a person need to do something for me to be nice to them? No, I'm just a nice person. You feel what I'm saying? That I have a nice, uh, I'm, a, I'm a nice guy who does nice things for people and I'm polite and, you know, I'm a, I'm a, a good hearted person. That's just who I am. Like, I don't need for anybody to do anything for me to be nice to them. You see what I mean? And that's the trick yeah. that a lot of these women do is that, oh, well, what are you doing for me to submit to? Blah, blah, blah. You know, there's, there's nothing I need to do to for you to submit. You just are supposed to have a submissive nature. You see what I'm saying? Whether okay. whether whether or not I'm the guy you should be dealing with, that's a whole nother story. You see what I mean? And so sometimes women deal with guys who they don't necessarily need to be with, but her nature of being of her being submissive should be within her. Uh, you know, uh, and and and, it, and, at, and at the end of the day, it doesn't really even have anything to do with me because it's not necessarily about me. It's about her having that nature because any guy she's dealing with, she should have that submissive nature toward him. Just like any person that I'm interacting with is like, I'm just going to be cool with whoever because I'm a cool guy. I don't, I don't need you to do shit for me to be cool to you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't need to do anything. So it's the same type of uh, thought process. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, okay. You know. So yeah, yeah so okay. they try to get you with that. Don't don't fall for that bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Like, Okay, I mean, but what if they hit you with something like, okay, let's say you mm. you living with a woman mm. and like y'all pay y'all pay the bills fifty fifty mm. y'all split it fifty fifty right. So like, what if they try to hit you with something like that? Like, why should I be submissive and we both mm. I pay half of everything? Well, like, see that's and, and see that's the issue because my question would be, why are you? St- living with a woman who has that attitude in the first place you see what i'm saying like it's like you almost you already done fucked up letting it get that far you see what i'm saying because a chick doesn't a chick doesn't a chick's not submissive and then all of a sudden turns into a woman who's not submissive just later on out the blue nah it's just she wasn't if if that's her attitude that's that's been her attitude so a guy who's going to live with a woman and split bills and be on a serious relationship with a woman who has that attitude anyway, that's his bad. You feel what I'm saying? Like, for dealing with a girl like that. So now it's sort of like, that's just something you're going to have to deal with if you're in that situation. Because at this point, it's going to be hard for her to turn or, or for her to uh, be that type of submissive woman because you've been with her for so long having her talk to you like that or having her be that way to you like that. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And and this is the problem yeah. with guys in relationships is that you should not, and I talk about this in another video, you should not be in a, in a relationship with a woman who hasn't earned the right to be a, a girlfriend. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, that's the problem right there. Dudes just be handing out committed relationships like it's fucking freak, like flyers and shit. Nah, the chick gotta earn that shit. And the way she earns it is she shows that she's submissive. She shows that she's the type of chick who's worth being in a relationship with. You see what I'm saying? So, you know. Yeah. It's well, well, I mean, well, at the beginning, like, when I first talked to this uh, particular woman, she mm-hmm. she was, I didn't really know about the submissive dominant mm-hmm. uh, dynamic. Right. Like, I didn't even, that wasn't even on my mind, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But she was, like, really nice at first. Like, she would do, like, little stuff. Like, a, like she was being submissive, basically. Mm, right. Like, but I didn't really look at her. I was like, oh, she's being really nice. Mm, right. But then it kind of changed once we moved in together. Mm-hmm. Right. And see, that's the, that's the thing. 
That's the, and how long y'all been together before y'all moved in together? Uh, probably about two months. Oh my goodness, you see. <laughs> That's the... I know, I know, I know, but I, I got a good exa- I got a good excuse though. Like, oh my god. <laughs> she had just got put out of her mama house. Mm-hmm. So she didn't have nowhere to go, and I was her boyfriend at the time. So like, it was just like, yeah, I mean, you can stay here. Wait, 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 wait. So, so she got put out of her mother house, and she came to live with you. Yeah. And you fucking, and and she acting funny when you ask her to do shit. Yeah. Nah, son. Nah, don't. <laughs> that's 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 a no no right there. Are you what? Nah, that's not good. That's what I'm saying. Like, yo, dudes, yo, you gotta be on these chicks like nah that's not even cool because you're the one that's helping her out you feel what i'm saying so Mm -hmm. how the fuck you helping her out and she acting all funny no no hell no so the thing is and and also you you was on you you've been together with her for two months and then y'all moved in together you see what i'm saying that's that's not that's not enough time you see what i mean yeah yeah i agree so, yeah, I agree. I, right. I would never do that again. Right. And so that's what I'm saying. If you ever going to move in with a chick or you're going to be in a, um, you know, like a serious long-term relationship, you got to give that shit some time so that you can fill her out to see if she's qualified to even be your girl for real. You feel what I'm saying? It's like, okay. like, like, I, like I said in my, and, and they say in, in, in the chat rooms, I said in my other video, like, especially if you marrying a chick. You need to be with her for like five to ten years before you even propose to this shit. You understand what I'm saying? If you're gonna, if a chick's gonna be your girlfriend, she need to be with dating you for at least like two years. You feel what I'm saying? In most cases, and then you can say, okay, I see that you've proven to me you can be my girl because you've been doing this, 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 and that. You feel what I'm saying? So if you're dealing with a chick and she's being combative and she's on some other bullshit but she wants to be your girl it's like well no you can't be my girl i'm not gonna you know she's like what but we've been together well look you you ain't doing this and you ain't doing that so i can't you know what i'm saying we could still be cool and everything but you ain't gonna be my girl acting like that you know what i'm saying like and that's how you got it that's how you got to step to them because that's how you sort of manage your relationship and create your relationship that way in order to actually have a sustainable relationship because it's you sort of um, building that foundation in order to have that relationship run smoothly. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I can feel that. So, you know. I can feel that. And I got one more question. Mm, Right. Okay, uh, now, as far as, you know, the submissive thing, Mm. Like how how far does this go? Like, mm. for example, like if you want some head, can you? Are you supposed to be able to get head whenever you want? Like, how far does this submissive thing go? You know what I mean? No. Nah, well, the thing is, it's not necessarily where you getting head whenever you want. Like, if if you know, if your girl's fucking sick in the bed and shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, she can't give you head. <laughs> you know what I mean? But but it's more so just in general. If you're being sexual with her and she doesn't want to fucking do it, you feel what I'm saying? Then is you know, and it becomes a problem, then that's an issue. You feel what I'm saying? But once in a while, if like let's say if she's tired or she's sick or whatever, then she can't really she can't really give you head at that point. But generally, she should be giving you head. You see what I'm saying? Because that's your girl, and especially if you're in a, in a monogamous relationship, then she got to you know she got to do that. You feel what I mean? Yeah. So it, 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 and if and if and if any of these things are not happening, she should not be your girl. You feel what I'm saying? Like, period. That's what I'm saying. Like, you got to you got to check all these things off the list before she can even be a girl. It's like you know they got to go through the training. They got to go through the fucking tests. She can't just be your girl. You see what I'm saying? And that's the problem. Dudes just be letting girls be in relationships with them, like long term relationships. And that's how shit gets fucked up. And then you you end up in a situation where either she's running the show, the relationship's not really uh, running smoothly, and that's because you haven't sort of, like, test these girls out to see if they're worth it. You see what I'm saying? So it's, yeah. it's one of those things. You feel what I mean? So that's, that's all it really is, man. You feel me? 
So yeah, yeah man. Yeah, I feel that. Yeah, man. I feel that. But yeah. um, but yeah, I man. I appreciate the advice, man. Yeah, that's what's up, man. I appreciate the call and all that other good shit. Um, so yeah, I'll just holler at you later, bro. All right. Okay. All right, peace. All right, people. It is fucking three in the morning. I'm about to head the fuck out and, you know, chill. Um, but listen, make sure you guys get the book, How to Have Sex with Two Women a Day. Get the hard copy or the audio book or the ebook or get all three, goddammit. Make it happen. Um, you know, and also make sure you click the link below to get the 30 minute game sessions. Make sure you do that. Um, I'm going to be. On Friday, I'm gonna have the the live joint. I'm I'm probably gonna have my homegirl Amina Zena, um, co-host with me this Friday. I might do that. And somebody I was asking about Amina Zena, yeah, like yo, what's up with Amina? So I might have Amina come through and you know and chill. You feel what I'm saying? So you guys can chill, hang out with me and Amina Zena. So that might happen this Friday. I'm not making any promises, but um, it might happen. I was speaking to her on the phone earlier today, so I was like, yeah, you gotta come through to. Do the live joint with me. You feel me? So, um, yeah, like, hell yes, do it. <laughs> but, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to have, uh, you know, try to have Amina Zena up in a spot. Um, and this Friday, um, I think I'm, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to be talking about. But, but yeah, make sure you guys uh, click the links below. Get How to Have Sex with Two Women a Day. Also, sign up for the 30-minute game sessions. Also, uh, you know subscribe to the patreon i need everybody to subscribe to the patreon make sure you're on the patreon because if you're not on the patreon you are missing the fuck out i'm telling you because we, the the bad boy show was on there and we've been extending some of the episodes so it's even longer even more game in it so you got to make sure you hit up the patreon so you can hear all of the new episodes of the bad boy show because you see, I've been putting the clips out, but the new episodes of the Bad Boy Show, um, you know, are off the fucking hook. And you are missing out if you are not on there. And also, I have exclusive sh joints on the um, Patreon. So there's gonna there's exclusive videos that you can only see on Patreon. And I'm going to continue putting exclusive joints um, on the Patreon. So make sure you join that. And um, make sure you guys uh, hit up the Bad Boy membership so you can join the membership and be a Bad Boy member so you can really get the step-by-step -step game, the heavy game that, you know, you guys can use and implement into your life, all right? But, yeah, I want to, I wanna, you know, I appreciate everybody who's watching. Um, let me see who we had it up in the building. We got... Icebreaker, you was trying to call in, so Ice Icebreaker, call in on Friday. I'm gonna do it again on Friday, and um, you know, we'll make it happen. So we had Icebreaker in the building. We had Kobe, Jay, Shadrizzle, Fueler was popping, Mux Muxum, <laughs> the Alpha Male, Jermaine Jones up in the place, Kenwood Drive, Mark Anthony, um, who else we got on here? Eat my booty, pause, um. We also got in here, Fresh 360 Waves, Gerara King, Ellie Empire, Brown Wallet 942. Who else we had up in this bitch? Um, Female Pimp, Explode was in the building, Infinite Ism. Um, who else we had up in here? Uh, did I say Shadow Rizzle? But yeah, I appreciate everybody uh, tuning in. Adam C. J. John Doe, Thomas Bison, and everybody else that was in the chat room. I appreciate all of you guys. I will see you guys on Friday. All right? So you guys have a good night or good morning whatever, whenever you're watching this. And I will holler at you later. Remember, the truth is inside you. Peace. I'm gone.